it's your organization, it's too big for them, and they just can't handle it. Too big for rules. Too big for rules. That's apparently what the case is here with the NSA. Coming from LibertyCrier.com, in an era of too big to fail banks, we should have known it was coming, an intelligence agency too big to rein in and brazen enough to say so. <laughs> In a remarkable legal filing on Friday afternoon, the NSA told a federal court that its spying operations were too massive and technically complex to comply with an order to preserve evidence. Wow. The NSA, in other words, now says that they cannot comply with the rules that apply to any other party before court. The very rules that ensure legal accountability because it's too big. Now, I have to say, this is fascinating. I, I, being someone who pays attention to courts to some extent and... It's kind of a weird hobby I've developed over the years. I go to courts a lot and uh, record video of, of various hearings. Usually when you disobey a court order, that's as serious of an offense as it gets. Uh, we've seen activists here get not very much in sentences for acts of civil disobedience, like you know carrying marijuana in public or whatever, uh, or chalking, for instance, and we've seen at the same time these same judges hand out far more stringent sentences and more uh, extreme sentences to people who simply miss a court date or refuse to follow uh, bail conditions and things like that. Graham Colson, one of the activists here in the Keene area, was just convicted this week of so-called contempt of court because he got too close to and allegedly spoke to one of the parking enforcers here in town when he was out on bail conditions, which had a no-contact order as part of them. So because he talked to a government bureaucrat that, that he was told not to talk to, he's going to jail for 60 days. And, you know, at the same time, I've seen him put uh, I've seen him put drunk drivers in jail for three days. So the real crime is for at least for us activist folks is not obeying the state, specifically not obeying a judge. If you don't do what the judge says, it's contempt of court and there's no appealing contempt of court. You just get the sentence, and you serve it. That's pretty much how it works. It's an inherent power of a judge. And so if this judge has written an order to the NSA saying, you need to turn over this information, and they're coming back and saying, well, we can't do that. We, we don't know where it is. We're so big, we have no clue where to find that information. We don't even know if it's kept anywhere. Yeah, how would you jail anybody for it? How Who would you, you jail? Well, that's a good question. Is anyone responsible for the actions of the NSA? Any of their executives? I highly doubt it. Yeah, well, I would just, I, if I were this court um, and I wanted to get this information, and I would think that they do, I'd just start throwing their secretaries and undersecretaries in jail until somebody comes up with the information. Uh, I'm, I'm predicting there'll be like a ceremonial resignation of somebody. That's usually how it, that's usually how it goes down. When the there's... sacrificial resignation is though that's somehow a significant change to the bureaucracy when they replace one bureaucrat with another bureaucrat. Yeah, exactly. Either and the of position whom you've never still heard exists. Of. Yeah, yeah. And they, of course, are still doing the same job for the most part. So uh, give us more to the story, Mark. The filing came in a long-running suit filed by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, challenging the NSA's warrantless collection of Americans' private data. Recently, the plaintiffs in that case have fought to ensure the NSA is preserving relevant evidence, a standard obligation in any lawsuit, and not destroying the very data that would show the agency spied on the plaintiff's communications. Yet, as in so many other instances, the NSA appears to believe it is exempt from the normal rules. In its filing on Friday, the NSA told the court attempts to fully comply with the court's June 5 order would be a massive and uncertain endeavor because the NSA may have to shut down all databases and systems that contain Section 702 information in an effort to comply. For an agency whose motto is, collect it all. The NSA's claim that its mission could uh, be endangered by a court order to preserve evidence is a remarkable one. That is especially true given the immense amount of data the NSA is known to possess and warehouse for its future use. It's interesting. Uh, like I think this is hilarious. This claim is is that they. You know, I don't know. We might have. We might. We might have already erased it. Um, I mean, come on. They're keeping everything else. Why this? Well, it's kind of interesting the juxtaposition here. On one hand, we know that government agencies tend to be inefficient. They tend to be plotting and slow and kind of dumb at the way they do things. But yet the NSA is presented to us as this really smart agency with all these sharp 
uh, people working for it who have come up with these tools that allow, uh, as Edward Snowden has revealed, uh, that allow the NSA to, if they have your email address or IP address, to just snoop on anything you're doing online. So, I mean, the stories we're told about the NSA on one hand are saying this is a really invasive agency and they're good at what they do. But then, on the other hand, you've got this story here showing that, well, it sounds to me like they're a lot like other bureaucracies. They're bloated, they're big, uh, and you know they can't even find their own left hand. It's a clear contradiction, and I think it co- goes back to the old question, is government really bad at doing good things or really good at doing bad things, you know? And I, I really think that people need to think about this in, in two ways. Um, first of all, there's, a, there's parts of government that are supposed to serve us, and they suck. Right. Whether you're talking about school or welfare programs, the DMV. the DMV. Yeah, they're bad. But then there is uh, very much parts of government that are set up to serve uh, the existing power structure and those connected to it. And I would say the NSA is a part of that. So I don't even know if this fits into I mean, obviously, yes, it's a huge organization. And there's lots of moving and non-moving parts, but this is really just stonewalling more than I think it's bureaucratic inefficiency. I'm guessing they're a pretty efficient organization for a government organization. I don't know. I mean, I couldn't say one way or the other. I think that uh, we we had a story that for years the FBI couldn't uh, couldn't put together an email system that would work. Somehow they couldn't put together, you know, Agent Vanat at fbi.gov. Wow. Right? Like, Mark. they just couldn't do it. <laughs> and Did you just out him? What's up? No agent? kidding. <laughs> Indeed. I've got Blue him now. Cover. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I'll go home after this segment. <laughs> they just couldn't make it happen. And they and kept hiring new IT guys, too. So they'd replace one IT guy with another one, and none of these cats with $170 million at their disposal could get an FBI, uh, I think, uh, FBI database or email system up and running. The um, the IRS just lost a bunch of information around whether or not they're spying on you or whatever. And remember, these are the people that want to collect all your information. Um, the, uh, the the U.S. Marshal's Office just replied all to a B- <laughs> BCC post on a uh, uh, on a uh, Bitcoin, the the sale of Dread Pirate Roberts Bitcoins. These people really are pretty in, 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 incompetent. I mean, I, I'm not saying that they're not lying. They may very well be lying, but... Well, we know the NSA tells lies. This is really the difficult... The difficult thing with the government is, are they lying or are they this stupid? And... I don't know. It's a I tend to think they're lying on this one. I I like where Brett's coming from on this, that uh, they're feigning inefficiency in this way to avoid, uh, to, in an attempt to avoid following the court's That's order. That's why I, if I were the judge in this circumstance, I would uh, take whoever delivered this piece of paper to the courtroom and mm-hmm. throw them in jail. And then I would throw the ne- the next day, throw the person that delivered that piece of paper to that person that delivered the piece of paper and throw him in jail and just keep throwing people in jail until they get the information that I want, or at the very least, pretend that they have. So this is a pretty fresh story that you're sharing with us, Mark. It was published on June 11th uh, over at LibertyCrier.com, and the filing was very recent to that. Apparently it was on a Friday, so I guess that would be Friday the 6th when the NSA filed this. I, you know, we'll talk more about the story here in a moment, but I'm very interested to find out how the judge will respond to this, because most judges don't take it real lightly when you don't follow their orders. This Mostly. is the most serious thing that anyone can do to upset a judge. 855-450 free. Can education be separated from the state? Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. These transcripts are given to potential employers as proof of coursework. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At mathgate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of getting a transcript associated with your name, you can obtain cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. Then, apply for jobs online using your Bitcoin address instead of your government-sanctioned name. Since mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously, you can be sure that you will not be discriminated against or shown favoritism due to your race, gender, political or religious views, and so on. There is only one factor by which you will be judged, your ability to reason. Be at the vanguard of separating education from the state by visiting mathgate.info. 
gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm, so feel free to reach out in the, in whatever way works best for you. As we continue here, we're going to take your calls, talk more about the NSA claiming they're just too big to comply with a court's order. And what will the court do in response to that? I'm fascinated to find out. We'll continue here in moments. Your calls are welcome as well on Free Talk Live. Looks like the housing market is uh, poking its head up out from its uh, hole from the last few years, and lots of people getting mortgages again. Whether you're looking to get to refinance or get cash out of your house or to, you know, get a new house or, you know, whatever the reason that you need to get a mortgage, I want you to check with MortgageMinuteGuy.com because they've got some really great options for um, home buyers that you probably aren't hearing about. There's the 15-year fixed, which costs you a lot less money in the long run. Um, the stated income loan, it's back, and uh, Roger Schlesinger from Mortgage Minute Guy, he's got, uh, he's got a great line on them as, as far as uh, probably more so than any other broker you're going to talk to. Speaking of which, if you're dealing with somebody, you need to get a second opinion. Second opinions, how do you prevent yourself from getting ripped off? It's MortgageMinuteGuy.com. Or give them a call at 866-288-0088. Their experts can help you with your mortgage. 866-288-0088, mortgageminuteguy.com. All right, let's jump into your calls and thoughts. We've got Rich Paul calling from jail. 
aka the Keen Spiritual Retreat here in Keene, New Hampshire, as he is sitting in a cage for what's called violation of probation. He was on probation originally after... I'm going to turn him down just a little bit there. The jail is such a quiet Shouting place. in the, uh, the background. Um, but uh, anyway, he was in jail originally for selling cannabis and um, for the most part and not hurting anybody else, engaging in consensual activities with other adult human beings, and apparently that's still a crime in New uh, New Hampshire in the United States and many places in the world, and it's tragic, and so many people like Rich who are peaceful and who have never harmed others get caught in this system that is the probationary system, and when you get out on probation, they set all kinds of ridiculous rules for you to follow, and they make it very easy to violate those rules, and that's what you're in jail for right now, Rich, and of course, uh, I didn't mention this last night and uh, or when the last time you called, and I wanted to get it out right now before we jump into your update. If you want to support Rich Paul, there's a GoFundMe account that Derek J. has set up at GoFundMe.com slash GoRichPaul. And you can also go to MailToJail.com to write to Rich. Uh, he would love to hear from you. There's also a way to uh, connect with Rich uh, as far as video visitation is concerned. You can do that at SecurusTech.net, and I think it's slash video visitation. Rich Paul, you're back on Free Talk Live. How you doing, Ian? Super. Go ahead. What's uh, what's the latest? Well, the news is I spoke to my public defender today, and uh, he uh, has received a plea offer from the uh, from the prosecutor, which is, in his words, stupid. Um, and I would have to agree with him. The plea offer would be I spend one year in jail. My probation is paused for that, so I would oh, still God. have 30 months of probation to do when I get out. Oh. And the only thing that the prosecutor would agree is not to charge me with felonies for, depend- for defending my friend from an attack by four assailants. Okay, that's what the prosecutor is willing to do is refrain from bringing for or I'm sorry refrain from bringing forward my my suspended sentences which I have like uh, seven years worth or three years worth or something and not to charge me for defending an innocent artist from an attack by four men so our answer to that is going to be not just no but hell no um, and wow. we are request we are requesting Just, a continuance. Hold on, hold on, hold on one moment, Rich. I'm curious because I'm new to violation of probation. I mean, I, I've known a lot of people who've been screwed by it, but this is interesting to me and outrageous at the same time. So what you're saying is, if you were to take this deal, they would actually be punishing you for the violation of probation in addition to your original punishment. So you were originally sent to jail for a year to serve and then you had three years of probation on top of that as i understand it and what was the amount that they were holding over your head in prison time uh well they can they can resentence me up to the unserved part of uh three and a half to seven so basically they could uh sentence me to two and a half years in the state prison um, okay. What they're offering to do is one year instead of that. Right. And um, this is a very clear-cut self-defense issue. I've done nothing wrong here. Um, you know, and I'm hoping actually that either Evan Knappen or Seth Hipple will get word of this and will take an interest in this case. Those are two uh, Free State Project friendly attorneys. So, but yeah. just to be clear, so they could bring back the prison, but they're, he's saying he won't do it if you take this plea deal of spending a year in jail. But that year in jail isn't going to knock off time off of your probation, and it's not going to knock off any time on the amount suspended, right? So it's like basically just punishing you for VOP on top of your already existing sentence, which will not be reduced in one iota after you're out, after the, if you were to spend that year in jail on the VOP. Wow. Exactly. And, uh, I didn't realize so VOP was itself a separate charge that you get sentenced it is. for. Uh, yes, it is. The only thing, God. the only benefit of that is that afterwards I would be charged 
I would have served two years out of the possible three and a half to seven. Mm -hmm. So they could only hold me up to five more years for additional probation violations. <sighs> okay, so I did misunderstand that. I thought you said that the uh, the year, if you were to spend another year, would not come off of the, the total amount of time uh, hanging it over your head. would not come off of my time in, on probation. Right, okay. Probation would be paused, but... Due to statute, it they they can't charge they can't keep me actually in jail for more than a total of three and a half to seven. Um, but still, that's a long ass time for a little bit of weed. Um, no doubt about it. That's crazy. So, well. The reason you're getting sentenced and likely the reason he's playing hardball with you is because you refused to take it to trial in the past. And this is one of the things that people in this country really don't get is that we no longer have trial by jury. The fact is, is when you, when you're when 99.9 something percent of cases in this in this country are decided before they ever get to jury trial um, and, and people are punished like you were, you were offered a sentence with no jail time whatever um, if you had uh, taken the plea but you refused to and they gave you jail time as a, as a result of losing that says to me that they're going to hit people harder for taking it to jury trial and to punish somebody for wanting to be proven guilty by a jury of their peers is as far as I'm concerned antithetical to what this country was founded upon. Well, and you don't get a jury in a VOP case either right nope. this is just going to be in front of a judge uh, yeah, and the burden of proof is a preponderance of the evidence, oh, not beyond a reasonable doubt. Rich Paul, I know you sent a lot of letters out, uh, blog posts from jail. I received those today, so at some point we'll start cranking through those, some of the activists here and myself, uh, and get those online at freekeen.com. Thanks for the update. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com From hackers and identity thieves to government spies, your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to UnseenNow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. UnseenNow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at UnseenNow.com. Don't worry about things you can't control. Isn't that what they always say? But it's about impossible to avoid worrying about what's going on these days. The government has used the war on guns, the war on drugs, and the war on terrorism to tear our Bill of Rights to shreds. But you can fight back. The Tenth Amendment Center has proven it, racking up major victories. For example, when the U.S. government claimed authority in the NDAA to have the military kidnap and detain Americans without trial, the nullifiers got a law passed in California, declaring the state's refusal to ever participate in any such thing. Their latest project is offnow.org, nullifying the National Security Agency. They've already gotten model legislation introduced in California, Arizona, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas, meant to limit the power of the NSA to spy on Americans in those states. We'd be fools to wait around for the U.S. Congress or courts to roll back Big Brother. Our best chance is nullification and interposition on the state level. Go to offnow.org, print out that model legislation, and get to work nullifying the NSA. The hero Edward Snowden has risked everything to give us this chance. Let's take it. Offnow.org. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. We will take your calls about anything that you want to discuss. Just dial in toll-free at 855-453-free. That's 855-450-3733. Do you need focus and are you feeling fatigued? Maybe you'd like to get an extra edge when it counts. There's a lot going on in our lives these days, and it's hard to keep track of everything, and it's easy to get tired. Don't you wish there was something that could get you out of the rut and give you the focus you need, help you get things done? Well, there might be. Look into modafinil from modup.net, M-O-D-U-P, modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world talk about how modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work, giving them the critical edge they need. Check out modup.net and look into it for yourself. They've got fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price. Modup.net is also a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You can order there at modup.net with Bitcoin and get a 33% discount. And to make the deal even better, check, uh, you check out with code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So again, code FTL at modup.net. And remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So do your research and go to modup.net. Get great service at a great price and use code FTL at modup.net. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. We will uh, keep you in the loop on what develops with the Rich Paul case as it does over time. Hopefully, it'll end up better than the, the first plea deal that they're offering. But, man, I, it's, hard to, it's hard to be optimistic about a violation of probation case. Uh, the rules of you know, what they need to prove to convict is not like a criminal case. It's a case heard in front of a judge. And guys go back to jail all the time for this stuff. And uh, it's just shocking that if, if Rich is convicted, that the time he'll spend in jail will not count towards his probationary period. So he will get out. If he were to spend a year in jail, he'll get back out of jail and still have a full two and a half years left on probation, which, of course, he could then violate again in another two months and then go back in for another year and then have another two years left. And it's just, man... It just really destroys people when they get into this probationary system. Yeah, um, it's so easy to violate. Well, indeed, it is. I, having been in prison for some time and hearing lots of people who, you know, went out on some form of uh, supervision and then came back. Um, I said to myself, if I ended up with any kind of probation, and I did sort of for a few days, um, that I was going to, you know, like really stick with it and that kind of thing. Now, I imagine lots of people feel the same way. Mm -hmm. It's this carrot that's hung before you. And when you get out, it's, it's often very difficult because 
you have not been earning any money for many months. Uh, you know, your apartment, if you had it, right. gone. So, so how was Rich supposed to pay the $3,000 fine when he got out of jail? Hard to say, right? Like, yeah. I think that... That uh, was one of the reasons he VOP'd. It was uh, one of the reasons that he hadn't paid anything, not whether right. that he hadn't paid the $3,000. Um, I mean... I would encourage people on probation to try to keep their fines up to date mm. as best they can. That's just it, it's one of those things. I mean, it's really it's very difficult. It's easy to sit here not on any probation at all and and shake and wag one's finger because it's really hard to do. But and so many people fail it, and one wonders: is it set up that way? It absolutely is. I agree. I all was on probation evidence. one time in my life, and you know, I saw a lot of people, uh, you know, going back. Very quickly, for very little, you know. And, and for long periods of time. Yeah, and I also used to work in a school where people had been in the juvenile justice system. And there's problems there as well, uh, where once, you know, that shadow is over you, even though it is to some degree a different system, mm -hmm. it's there. And it's very, very difficult to get out of it. And, you know, especially when you're, when you're young. And certainly there's a lot of people who are relatively emotionally mature who are in the adult "Quote unquote justice system, and the the level of frustration that I've seen, like people have to deal with the the lack of uh, just the complete disempowerment of of being subject to that system is incredibly frustrating. People make bad decisions. People maybe go back to some of the substances that got them in trouble. Sure, in the first what's the place. motivation to get your life back on track if you know the slightest mistake?" is going to result in you going back into a cage. Why would you want to go and get an, uh, you know start on a career, get a job, when two weeks later or two weeks into it or whatever, or however long into it, some random search of your house turns up a beer in your roommate's fridge yeah, and, exactly. uh, and you uh, you go back into prison? There's also the, all these variables. That, I mean, you just you know mentioned one, all these variables that you can't control. I mean, for a lot of these people, especially in the inner city, if they you know are out on probation, they basically have to leave town if they're still connected to a lot of cases. You can't you leave know, town. Oh, exactly. But if you're still connected to old neighborhoods or old friends, mm -hmm. I mean, you can get in a lot of trouble very easily and very quickly. Leaving town often is a very is very good advice for people who are on probation. If you can leave town and not violate the terms of probation, all these things, then yeah, all these things come down to money, Ian. Yeah. there's no doubt about it's it's all about money. If you have the you know you have somebody to to interface with the probation department and uh, help you get your probation reassigned. It, Oftentimes, you can do it with enough contact with your probation officer, too. You know, staying in contact and saying, hey, look, I'm really looking to get moved here, move there, that kind of thing. But, I mean, if you're moving, it's hard. It's expensive to move, as we know as movers for the Free State Project. It's, sure. not, a, it's not cheap. Sometimes you got to go stay with the uncle in, uh, you know, upstate New York or out in Alaska or something like that in order to just get away from people, places, and things. Yeah. So you can share your thoughts, any experience you have with VOP. You're certainly welcome to join us here. You can also bring up whatever's on your mind. We'll get back into the NSA and their excuse to a judge as to why they can't comply with the judge's order. First, we go to more of your calls and thoughts. AC in Ohio on the amp lines. Hey, AC. Yeah, uh, first off, I'd like to say I'm a new amplifier to your program. Oh, wow. Thanks. And, yep. And the other thing is I got a little girl's music. If you hear any uh, stuff going on in the back. Just kind of ignore that, okay? Okay. Yeah. So, um, well, Witt called in again, and he keeps bringing up something. that he, There's a topic he's been bringing up constantly that I've, I've had on my mind for a while, and it's something I've been wanting to talk about. And he's been talking about how, like, well, how, Japan, how the United States government doing all the awful things that it did to the Japanese has made it into a prosperous and free country, which is a load of nonsense. And as someone who actually has some background in Japanese history as well as uh, culture history, um, I can tell you right now that if you were to go to Japan and say that to people, to go up to a Japanese person and say, it's our country, that our government sticking around after World War II that made you into, made you free and successful, they would just laugh you out of the country. I mean, if you, I mean, for someone like James to say the things he said about how prosperous a, a, a Japan is because of, of what America did is just nonsense. I mean, like, he, he's obviously Why? Why never would they be la yeah. Why would the people in Japan laugh at that? Why is it nonsense? Because I mean, if you look at well, if you look at the corporate corporations, no one like uh, no one like the you know corporations like Sony, Honda. I mean, some of the biggest, most powerful, most 
biggest corporations come from Japan, and they and they and they've been around for a long time. And America, what America did is when they're what make Japan successful, and America had nothing to do with that. I mean, no, I mean. I mean, he's obviously, Wits obviously never used, uh, driven a Honda or used a Walkman or played a Nintendo. Well, what what does that uh, having used a Walkman um, or played on a Nintendo have to do with? Because I mean, I it, it's a it's a difficult point to argue. Two of the countries that produce some of the best stuff in the world are Japan and Germany, and strangely, they were on the decimating end of uh, you know U.S. and many other countries' uh, attacks in World War II. You know, their their right. essentially their industry was wiped out. And I don't know. I, I mean, I've heard people make the claim. I, I have no proof one way or the other. Um, I've heard people make make the claim that, yeah, in fact, that's the the fact that they got all that stuff wiped out that made them have to, you know, come back stronger. Well, Japan was a prosperous country before World War II. They were a prosperous country during World War II, and they were prosperous after World War II. So was Germany. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Same thing with Germany. Yeah. It yeah. reminds me of something one yeah. of my listeners said one time. If it wasn't for World War II, we'd all be driving Japanese and German cars right now. <laughs> hey, AC, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I feel sorry for AC that he's thinking about uh, James from Arizona at Amen. any point during his day. More on the way here on Free Talk Live. You can take control and bring up whatever's on your mind. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host Cheryl for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up what you want. Just dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. Also, welcome aboard to our new listeners in Banning, California. It's just to the east of Riverside. KMET, 1490 AM. I uh, apologize. We've actually been on the air for several days. Just now got around to updating the website with the information. They're taking the show every single night of the week. Uh, weeknights, I guess I mean. From 6 to 9 at night in Pacific Time. So welcome aboard to all our new listeners in Banning to KMET. And uh, you aren't listening if you're listening in Banning live to the show. So if you want to participate with us live, just give us a call at 855-450-FREE between 4 and 7 p.m. Pacific. And then you can listen to yourself later on when the show goes on the air there on KMET. So if you uh, if you want to learn more about the show, go to freetalklive.com. But it's an open phones panel discussion. Tonight, the panel is me, Ian. And me, Brett. And me, Mark. Brett's here courtesy of his show, The School Sucks Project at schoolsucksproject.com. Tell me a little more about it, Brett. What is it? Uh, the School Sucks Project is a, a podcast and a YouTube channel and a growing web community and uh, we, uh, the, the primary mission, the way I usually sum it up, is we're trying to differentiate education and schooling, which are very different things. You know, often people kind of think they're the same. You know, mm -hmm. if we don't have, we don't send kids to public school, how will they be educated? And I've always said they're not being educated there. So the mission on my show is to talk about what education really is. And in fact, uh, today I put out a show with uh, an interview the valedictorian from an alternative school who, in her very short 18 years, has been to Montessori. She's done homeschooling. She's been to public school. Hmm. And she's been to uh, what they call progressive education, an alternative school. So she talked about these four experiences and uh, helped me make that distinction between schooling and education because wow. she's seen it all. That's a lot of experience. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to checking that out. When You, you can go and do that anytime you want over at School Sucks Project. Dot com and get involved in forums and other things of interactivity. Absolutely. So let's uh, jump into your calls and thoughts here. James is on the line, I presume, from Arizona. Uh, James, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Yes, anywhere the rich and prosperous evil empire of Japan went before December 7, 1941, all they did was commit massive rape, murder, and pillage on an unforgivable scale. And uh, incomprehensible at that. Now, um, uh, agree so far. Empire, Prior, uh, just let's pause. Empire, hey. I'm not talking to you, Brett. I'm trying to respond to AC. I don't have much time. You'll have two more hours to talk. You're right. Please allow me. You're right. I do. You do have a limited Please amount of time. Please allow me. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Please allow me, Brett, and don't get smart with me because you're not that bright. Oh, jeez. Anyway, Good heavens. AC, Go ahead. Please. AC is in, uh, when. Japan had their evil empire shut down in 1945 forever. They were not the victims. They were the victimizers. Now, if, they, if everywhere they went, they destroyed. They didn't build back up and turn into lovely places like the United States of America helped Japan re rehabilitate themselves 
after they lost the war. Like they're Unlike, helping Iraq, say, like right? the Soviets, Soviets, where they took over, all they did was rape, pillage, and destroy. Just like Japanese, again, did everywhere they ever went for 14 straight years. I got to go to work. Bye, so no Brett. one in the military, James, I guess, uh, in the United States would rape anyone. Right, right. That doesn't happen. I, he was right. The, I mean, the first part, the empire of Japan was extremely brutal, as empires often are. And I think that we need to, again, make a an important distinction between the imperial government of Japan and the people of Japan who, uh, the people of Japan who, you know, turned to basically dust when those yeah, bombs were sure. dropped. And I mean, you know, the war always has the same outcome. The state always wins. The people always lose. I just like to say thank you to James for the succinct uh, call. It was very focused because yeah. he had to go to work. So uh, he should call in before work more often. You know, yeah. the, the thing about an empire is, is that they have this feeling, this feeling that, hey, what are the, all those people doing on our land? We should go take care of that. And, uh, I mean, when all you have to do is look at the United States' reaction to Native Americans, and you'll see what an empire looks like. Now, I'm not saying that there's not, you know, empires, that we, things that we can point, point out, uh, you know, uh, that the Japanese empire did. It was awful. But where did they get their playbook? And I can tell you where they got their playbook. They got their playbook from places like England and France and Germany and Russia and uh, the United States and all these big countries that came before and had their empires. The Ottoman Empire, certainly not least among them. You know, the fact is history is replete with all kinds of nations doing all kinds of horrifying things. Japan was late to the game, the empire game, and communications were a little better. And you weren't able to rewrite history quite as well back then. And, you know, I think that the United States probably does deserve a little bit of credit for being better at uh, being uh, at hiding its, uh, its, its nation building. You know, they're not quite as go in, destroy everything and do what they want. It's, uh, it's much more setting up puppet dictators and that kind of thing. The, the United States and Great Britain have really used what is often considered a Fabian strategy, right? Slow and steady wins the race. So, I mean, the United States military killed more people in the 20th century than the Nazis did. Hmm. The Nazis just packed it all too close together for, uh, you know, comfort for the rest of I Europe. I hadn't heard that. That's interesting. Well, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely sure. I mean, you, you, could, you could put the, the death toll of the Nazis somewhere. I mean, there's obviously going to be a tremendous amount of disagreement here, but... I yeah, would, I'd have to. I'd, I'd have to see the numbers. Um, I would. Ha I would have a hard time believing that it exceeded 15 million people, and that's democide. That includes democide too. That includes the Holocaust. You know. Hmm. So, so where is the U.S. US numbers of 15, 15 million? Where's? I mean, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look it up. Okay. It's. I. The last time I remember, it was. It was considerably in excess. Um, because the United States was at it for a whole century. I mean, World War One, World War Two. Uh, Vietnam, Korea. But in World War I, what did the United States do except sort of, um, you know, run from trench to trench across Europe shooting military folks? I mean, I, I kind of feel like when you put on a, when you put on the uniform, the uniform's got a big target on its, uh, on the front and the back. And as far as I'm concerned, when you put the uniform on, uh, you know, so what? It's the, it's the civilians that concern me the most. Sure. Uh, no, oh, but, absolutely. But there is the Philippines, the United States going there and just doing whatever the heck they want once they got them from the, the Spanish. And I think that that's, uh, you know, it's vile well, and disgusting. But, yeah. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of things that most people aren't even aware of. Like after Vietnam, which was millions of people, they moved on and carpet bombed Laos and Cambodia for years. Um, and, and that's not, I mean, that would, that would get you close to the Holocaust right there. Those three countries, you know, and that was done in a period of a decade. So, I mean, the point is, like, uh, numbers aside, the the slow strategy that Britain has used for much longer than the United States, even though they were aggressive and forceful at times, obviously, as well, um, when you pack it all in close together like that, alarms go off and, and somebody intervenes. So the Nazis, um, I think under Hitler, they, they saw themselves, I mean, they really believed that they were under threat from the rest of Europe, and they believed that time was of the essence, and there's no defending what they did, obviously, because it's indefensible. Uh, but I think that, you know, you can get away with a lot more when you use the 
Fabian strategy. Share your thoughts at 855-453. We'll talk more about the NSA and their strategy with the court where they're claiming they can't follow the court's order uh, because they're just too darn big. You know, when we manage to create robots that can look and act like humans, that is androids, will they be our slaves, our masters, or our partners in exploration and prosperity? Well, Quantum Vibe, the science fiction adventure webcomic, suggests that the answer is all of the above. As our heroes continue their epic mission to open a vast new frontier, they encounter an android slave culture on terraformed and corporatized Mars and later join forces with a liberated android friend to avert a deadly disaster in the freewheeling asteroid belt. Quantum Vibe Volume 2, Murphy, collects these adventures in a 161 full-color page printed volume and is available from Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and BigHeadPress.com. Now, of course, if you want to pick up your uh, latest episode uh, or your volume, Volume 2 of Quantum Vibe, you can do that and help Free Talk Live at the same time by going to shop.freetalklive.com, where you can enter Amazon through our links, our affiliate links, and then Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sales. So that way, uh, the folks over at Quantum Vibe, uh, Big Head Press, they'll get a cut. Amazon gets a cut. Free Talk Live does, and you get the great comics that you're looking for. So go and check out shop.freetalklive.com for all kinds of great Big Head Press comics. There's more Free Talk Live on the way here. Plenty of time for your calls and thoughts. Uh, we've also got a story on the way about the police. It was brought up earlier to, uh, earlier this week about, well, how much can police lie? And there's a great story over at the Christian Science Monitor that gets into the details. Apparently, there there is a limit to how much they can lie, but no one really knows what it is. We'll talk about the case. Gold Bond presents Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm hanging out with my Gold Bond buddies, and they're like, Shaq, Shaq, great job with the Gold Bond powder spray. People love it. So I'm soaking in the good vibes, kicking off my shoes. Next thing I know, they're coming out with a new foot powder spray. Boom. Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body. And new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Now is the time for new flooring in your home because Lumber Liquidators has every floor on sale with the end of quarter clearance sale on right now. Get huge savings on all flooring like quick click pre-finished hardwood for $169 a square foot, solid hand scraped horizontal bamboo for $179, and this weekend only get 8 millimeter cherry laminate for just $0.69. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Special 24-month financing is available. But hurry, this end of quarter clearance sale ends Monday, June 30th. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, June 18th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,273. Silver opened at $1,977. And Bitcoin is trading at $605.90. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And support comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Online, accountableauthority.com. In the news, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals ruled this week that tracking citizens' cell phone data without a warrant is unconstitutional, as reported by Wired.com. 
In the case, United States versus Davis, the court ruled in favor of protecting Americans against invasive surveillance methods, including the massive vacuuming of metadata. The Davis decision suggests the collection of business records and transactional data by the U.S. government for law enforcement purposes may be illegal. In the Davis case, police obtained records from cell phone companies indicating where the defendant was when they placed calls near the scene of a robbery. President Obama ordered the deployment of 275 U.S. troops to Iraq to offer protection and security for embassy workers, reported Russia Today. The nation's capital continues to be pressured by insurgents as the violent terrorist group ISIS gains momentum. According to the White House, security personnel are entering the country with permission from the Iraqi government. Officials are also considering sending approximately 100 Special Force soldiers in a non-combat training role to assist Iraqi forces against fighters. Secretary of State John Kerry added that Hellfire missiles and drones might be used to combat insurgents. Austin police are continuing their dog killing spree, targeting their latest victim in Dripping Springs, a region southwest of the Texas city last weekend. While it's in a dog's nature to defend its home, police seem to believe any dog barking or growling at officers deserves to be shot dead. Hayes County deputy shot and killed a family's pit bull after calling for help regarding a dispute with a tenant. A family present for the killing said several lives were put in danger when the officer suddenly opened fire in the resident's home. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, now offering ProPure water filtration, the only gravity-driven all-in-one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, June 18th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The IRS said they are unable to produce the emails of six more employees involved in targeting conservative groups, reported National Review Online. IRS officials are blaming computer crashes for their inability to provide the requested records and admit they've known since February they'd be unable to do so. The IRS is being accused of covering up the fact that they lost key documents in the investigation after Lois Lerner's personal computer crashed, allegedly destroying two years' worth of emails requested by the committee. Under orders from the Obama administration, IRS employees targeted conservative groups for their political preferences. On Monday, the USS Mesa Verde, equipped with 550 Marines, entered into the Persian Gulf in preparation for a possible operation in Iraq. The ship is a San Antonio-class amphibious transport dock designed to carry an expeditionary force across the sea, deploying landing craft and helicopters. Pentagon Press Secretary Rear Admiral John Kirby said the ship is capable of conducting a variety of quick reaction and crisis operations. Starbucks has announced a new partnership with Arizona State University that will allow employees nationwide to attend college for free. The Starbucks College Achievement Plan will give Starbucks workers the opportunity to graduate from ASU without debt and no requirement to repay or stay with the company. The program will offer full tuition reimbursement for juniors or seniors enrolled in ASU's online program so long as they work at least 20 hours a week. Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz stated that the initiative was an effort to address inequality in America. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal, affordable high-quality printing. Now accepting Bitcoin, online, massappealinc.com. And support comes from growyourowngroceries.org, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, June 18th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On May 6, 1937, the explosion of the German passenger ship Hindenburg brought cheer to an entire generation of Americans in the midst of the Great Depression. The souls of the American people were fleetingly revitalized by the flame-engulfed Zeppelin and the shrill screams of burning passengers leaping to their heartwarming deaths. Oh my, it's burst into flames. The burning embers and charred flesh are cascading splendidly onto the mooring mast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most terrific thing I've ever seen. Oh, the luminosity, the gaiety. And on May 7th, 2000, Vladimir Putin became president of Russia after promising citizens he could bend anything they gave him with just his bare hands. And that was what happened this week in history. In the words of the Italian philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli, 
Whoever wants to foresee the future must first look at the past and then imagine all that old stuff looking more futury and space-like. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. We'll talk about the police telling lies here in a little bit. What are the what are the rules? Are there any rules? Are there any limits? The Christian Science Monitor will investigate. And we still haven't finished up the NSA story, and I felt like there was more to it uh, than the you know just the few sentences that we shared with you about them refusing to follow a court order, claiming the reason they can't do it is because well we're just too big and bureaucratic. We can't possibly follow the these orders we can't we don't know what we're doing uh, one side of the, the organization to the next etc we'll get to more of their excuses and what's happening with that case and the we includes me tonight ian and brett and mark and our number is 855 450 free and that number is brought to you by pro xpn we've got skype as well skype on in at username lrn.fm we start out with adam in baltimore you're on free talk live adam hey ian and i don't know who else is there tonight brett and mark go ahead adam Hey guys, I wanted to talk about um, these these ride sharing apps. I know you've brought them up uh, a number of times. Uber, Lyft, Sidecar. Yeah, they're uh, very interesting. I've never had the opportunity to use one uh, because last time I was in Austin, or when I was in Austin, we tried to use Uber, and I guess the Austin City Council there has prohibited that from happening. So, what's your experience? Well, I haven't used it myself. I was kind of thinking about maybe being a driver, but. I was looking into it a little bit more, and I'm as as great as I think the idea is, and for, for the reasons of cost to both um, the driver, which you know would be, hey, if I'm going from one side of town to the other, and you know gas is is going up again, as we all know, um, it, it would save me some some bucks, you know, if somebody else was paying for the gas or what. I don't know how it works, but. Mm-hmm. You know, if I was going from one side of town to the other, it would it would cost me probably fifteen dollars in gas, and if I if I could get that covered, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Pr- problem is, and this is where the government comes in, and un, uh, the unusual. I I usually side against the government, but what's happened when these rideshare app drivers have gotten to car accidents? Uh, Uber. Lyft, sidecar, they do not have any liability. It's all on the driver. And really what needs to happen is the driver needs, and this is kind of buried in the fine print of the app, the driver is needs to get what's called commercial liability insurance. Yeah. And that's not very cheap. <laughs> well, this is the same thing. Um, I, I would like to point out that Pizza companies have essentially been riding on this for decades too. Um, when you're, you know, if you get into an automobile accident as a driver of a pizza car, your insurance company could potentially give you some real problems. I mean, this is one of the reasons. If you didn't have commercial insurance, correct. Um, I mean, because essentially your insurance is meant for a person who drives around day by day. Mm-hmm. I would like to also point out that many outside sales positions, like people who work for radio stations and do outside sales for radio stations. Mm-hmm. I spent many of many years uh, working for um, different ad venues in Sarasota, Florida, driving around in my car. I wouldn't have been on the road if it hadn't been for the fact that I was working for Clear Channel and, um, you know, other mm-hmm. ad venues at the time. And, you know, that – did I ever upgrade my insurance? No. No, I didn't. So if you'd gotten caught – I mean, I've never gotten into a situation like this, thank goodness. But when you get into an accident, do they start asking you questions about where you were going? Is that uh, Who's become that, the relevant? police officers? Not, not just the police, but the insurance company or whatever, the uh, investigator for the insurance company. I don't remember that being asked when I was uh, – the one time I was in an automobile accident um, okay. regarding – Mark, yeah. Mark that, sound, that sounds weird, though, because, that, I mean, uh, under that, it, it would seem like anybody who drives their job would have to have that. I don't – No, if you're driving to... your vehicle for your job is what you have right. to have that. Well, it's not – well, see, this is because, you know, this is – the vehicle's being used for the service. That's the thing. Like, when I drive to my job, you know, that's – you know, I'm I'm driving to a job for a purpose. I'm not driving – you know, I could, get, I could get there some other way. I'm not talking it's about not driving to your job, dude. I'm talking about driving as your job. So a pizza oh. delivery guy or oh, delivery. Um, drives oh, to the uh, pizza yeah, place – 
and then he picks up pizzas. Uh, then he, you know, he yeah. clocks in. He, you know, has his. He puts his hat on. Sometimes he'll put a little glow in the dark thing on the top of his car, and then he picks up a pile of pizzas and in, in one of those uh, insulated bag things, and then he goes and delivers the pizza. I'm not talking about the drive to the pizza place. I'm talking about the drive oh. away from the pizza place. All the driving while on the clock, and then when they punches the clock to Absolutely. go home, I'm not talking about the drive home. Absolutely. I was asking about the the radio sales thing. How does that work with the radio? The radio sales, sales is essentially the same thing. You know, at depending on what time I showed up at work um, that particular morning at seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever it was that I uh, showed up that day, I drive into work. Um, I sit down at my computer. I look at my day. I look at my day timer. In some cases, I would drive actually from home to my first appointment and not mm-hmm. go into the studio. I don't exactly even know how to quantify that one. Um, but the fact is, is that after that, I would drive to the Buick dealer, and then I'd drive to You're the tattoo parlor. for work. And I'm so, driving for work. Uh, so, Adam, what was the amount? I mean, you looked into the commercial insurance. You said it's a lot of money. So what are we talking about? Um, I was looking at anywhere. The average, it's kind of weird because, you know, it all depends on how much you, you, you're doing the driving. Um, you know, it's that's they base it on how often you drive, just like pretty much all insurance does. Um, but average, I would say between eight and twelve hundred hours. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of money. And uh, what yeah, is it? What does the Uber average driver bring in? I wonder per month. I I, I really don't know, but um, well, the yeah, rates like are said, lower, but they get like eighty percent of the of the call than mm-hmm. um than whereas a taxi company gets like the driver gets fifty percent, yeah. um and. So, but the taxi company takes care of the car, and whereas uh, with Uber and the liability and the li- and the insurance, yeah. um, no doubt about it. Whereas Uber does not. So, you know, yeah, it, it's all about assuming risk on all on all parties because you know even you know as a passenger, you know if if you get into a, an accident and you end up in the hospital and you're paralyzed for life because of that accident, you know, <laughs> you're on your own. You know, good luck collecting that money. And it, like I said, it's I love this idea. Um, I think it's I, – I, I wish it, there wasn't the risk involved, but there is the risk involved. Is there such um, a thing as passenger insurance where a passenger who is not a licensed driver who or you know, who that, is just a passenger most of the time uh, can be insured? That's a really good question. I don't know. And the other question I, that I have, maybe a lawyer can call in or you can ask a lawyer, could the Uber – or Lyft or whatever driver, could they have somebody sign something to to waive like, liability? You know, to waive the liability? Probably you know, waive not. It. And I don't know if Uber would be happy with that either. Who knows? I'd like to Good say question, that though. likely if you have insurance at all, um, if you have a car and insurance on that car at all, there's plenty of people who have no automobile insurance. Mm-hmm. Just either they don't drive or they don't have insurance on their car. But if you have insurance, it's likely that uh, that your insurance company could be gone after if you're just a passenger. Yeah. Well, the last thing I want to say, guys, is you know you don't need insurance until you need it. So I would definitely recommend it if you're going to go into this. Much of the insurance industry has been wrecked by government interference, mm. and I, I would love love to know because insurance companies are essentially governing bodies if the government didn't get in the way between people and their insurance what would those relationships look like because it seems like whenever insurance gets involved rates are driven sky high when it when you talk about health care you know insurance just drives the rates up because people have no more responsibility for things yeah i can answer that one i used to know somebody before their state got um, had, had car insurance as a requirement. Um, the car insurance was a lot cheaper, and then as soon as the laws were implemented, it went way up. Yeah, New Hampshire <laughs> does not have mandatory insurance. Adam, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. And it's just, if you've got any experience as a driver, how did you assess the risks of driving people around? Did you get this commercial insurance? What percentage of uber drivers slash lyft drivers left what was the other one sidecar uh drivers what percentage of them have this insurance i'd imagine it's low i mean they're trying to keep their costs down they're trying to make money most of these mm-hmm. people are you know they're it's i would consider this to some extent marginally employed does yeah. uber uh give their customers or lyft etc do they give their customers a heads up like beware this driver may not be insured 
Uh, That's what, a good question. What yeah. level of uh, disclosure is happening to the clients? 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. And you take control on Free Talk Live. Quantum Vibe, it's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. QuantumVibe.com from Big Head Press. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't gonna make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Oh, he's pretty out of the road. Hey! Oh my god, unbelievable. Why are you running from Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Just dial on in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. More on the NSA story still to come here tonight, as well as the uh, detailed story from the Christian Science Monitor about the police and their ability to lie to you, to legally tell lies to get you to admit to doing something against the law. 
Toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. There's a great website out there. It's called antiwar.com. Yeah, antiwar.com is singular in the area of uh, websites that are focused on peace, uh, solving conflict without using the archaic um, form of communication called war. And But antiwar.com has had some problems. There was a fine levied by the United States government against antiwar. Uh, the FBI was watching antiwar uh, when that news broke. It drove away a lot of donors. Um, actually, uh, some major donors died recently. And, and when it rains, it pours. Yeah. Um, they're, they're in a pretty tight spot this summer. The fact is they've cut staff over the past several years in half. And... The top two people there at Antiwar, the the top two, I don't call, I want to call them execs, uh, the top two folks there, um, they're not taking paychecks this summer because that money's that tight. Now, they're committed to keeping Antiwar.com on the internet. If you're committed the, um, to that too, that you believe that the idea that uh, the, the, the premier Antiwar website on the internet is... Uh, libertarian is important, please go there and donate like I have at uh, antiwar.com slash donate. They'll take whatever form of donation you want to give, but um, in fact, they do take Bitcoins, and in fact, they prefer Bitcoins. They call it the peace currency. It's very easy to donate there. I, When I donated, it, would, they made it very easy for me. It's fast, um, just in moments during the show, antiwar.com slash donate. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. More on the NSA coming up here in a bit. First, back to your phones and your thoughts, your phone calls, rather. Ty, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Ty. Hey, good evening. There's, there's been uh, a few people calling in the last uh, few days, last week or so, uh, talking about uh, violent responses to the police and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that there's, you know, there, you have a right to self defense, but if that defense has no chance, of being successful, then it's effectively suicide. So I highly recommend people try to find nonviolent solutions. And I think that rather than having a revolution, there's a problem with a revolution, is if you violently depose the state, you become the state. You know, it's sure, kind of like the virus of empire. So the, the best way, I think, to get rid of the state is not to fight it, it's to replace it with voluntary services, such as, you know, Bitcoin is a, is a good replacement for centralized currency, and it's really starting to take hold. That's really a hopeful thing. That, that in fact, is a key thing because currency flows through everybody, mm -hmm. you know? You've got to have it, and if the government has control of it, which they do for the most part, then you're going to be beholden to the government. You're never going to replace the state until you can have control of, or until you can relieve them of control of currency and other basic human services. So I think agorism is probably the way to go, if I understand agorism correctly, but I'm not sure if I really do. I think... Um, well, tell Brent me what you understand agorism to that. be. What was well, that? I, that's just it. I don't. I really don't understand completely. I understand that it's it's kind of like a black market, but it's also, uh, I guess, it's supposed to be uh, trying to almost revolutionary, you know? Um, so, uh, Brett, do you have an understanding of agorism? Because if not, I can just throw mine out there. Sure. I just want to say we're doing a series right now called Autonomy Through Agorism and what that is about. I mean, I always, I always think about freedom from, you know, the individual up. You know, and the yeah. goal the goal of my show is get as much freedom as as you can in your life as soon as possible. And agorism is certainly a way to do that in some respects. And agorism is really it doesn't have to be ag uh, activism. Some people do agorism as activism, but it's it's really counter economics. It's finding ways to get out of the spider web that we're all born into. You know, and it it is it is difficult at twenty five, thirty, thirty five years old to start pulling yourself out of that web. Um, but I agree with what Ty said. I think uh, it's impoverishing. In fact, <laughs> it can be. It absolutely can be. Um, but you know, because I don't consider freedom to be impoverishment. Uh, I consider having being wealthy to, to be uh, to be freedom. And I think that uh, oftentimes agorism is kind of this uh, this this idea that hey, if you just buy a piece of land, grow your own food, and uh, 
you know, do things under the table, you'll be uh, you'll be you'll be set. And I, having my own land, growing my own food, I can say that this is some of the most expensive food I have ever eaten. <laughs> sure. There's a, uh, there's a real good agorist science fiction book by J. Neil Shulman called Alongside Night. Has anybody read that? No, as a matter of fact, Free Talk Live is uh, in the movie. <laughs> it's true. Oh, is that right? I haven't seen the movie. Is it, is it out? I don't know how. I don't know in what forms of distribution the movie is out. I think it's still being screened. I could be wrong about I, that. I um I saw it last year at the Porcupine Freedom Festival up in the media room, so I got to see it. Uh, I think it might have been one of the premiere screenings. Yeah, that fiction uh, that fiction story, I guess, is pretty much like almost like a a complete agorist story. You know, you you get introduced to this whole new world that's underground, basically, but not you know not physically underground, but it's hidden the, the counter uh, counter economics as, as Brett was mentioning, and you know a lot of the a lot of countries where there's a greater oppression, there's a higher uh, a, a, a bigger counter economy because it's, it's really the counter economy that keeps things going. That right. really Look at uh, keeps Soviet Russia. For and that's the point I'd like to make on agorism. Why I do not think that agorism isn't revolutionary in any way, shape, or form. Um, I don't think it stops the state, um, other than maybe getting it out of your life a little bit. But um, the two thirds of the transactions in the world are done in the underground economy. They're not tracked by the state. They're not taxed. They're not anything. And when you're talking about the state having so little control, and I'm talking about the state as a concept, the state having so little control control over uh, human economics as only having one-third of the tra transactions under their purview, it hasn't stopped them. Consider places like, you know, in the past, the Roman Empire and other empires that have existed in the past. They could, they must have been far lower than a third um, of the transactions in their purview. I, I mean, how, tell me how, does agorism uh, somehow undermine the state. I, I often have this little joke that I talk to people at my house is uh, they'll, they'll you know have some bacon or a piece of fruit or um, some uh, you know berry or, or something from that we've from our garden and I'd be like it's agorist. Can you feel the state sh quaking? Well, I mean and that's funny, but I think that there is an answer to your question and it, it's not a great answer, but it's an answer. Uh, and that is that you could argue that by doing business outside of the system, you're depriving the state of revenue. You're pre preventing it from getting its cut. The state, the state makes its own money. This is why I but will not always... Not all the states. No, not the state governments. They don't. I think before we get too far away from this, we've gone back up to the top view again, and we're talking about the state, and I think it's important to see this from the bottom up, and we're talking about personal freedom. It's ways to get the state out of... I don't care about the state. The state will go when it goes. Well, let's you know, talk I'm about not it. participating in that. We can continue the discussion here in moments. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Is agorism going to create the future free society? Free Talk Live. Global warming purports rising CO2 levels while evolution describes mutated DNA. The fraudulent sciences describe effects of iron poisoning and copper depletion. As generations are iron poisoned and copper deprived, the DNA has mutated and weakened as blood types A, B, and O. These blood types and rhesus factor are falsely used as evidence of evolution. Humans were created solely with blood type A, B negative. Fraudulent science purports mutated DNA coupled with rising CO2 levels in blood are causing humans to go into extinction. In truth, humans are being methodically exterminated by iron poisoning and copper depletion. Blood type AB is on the Shroud of Turin and matches the healthy population. They claim this is evidence. They are from the line of Christ and thus are his Christ. They are from the lines that were disinherited 2,000 years ago, and now they claim to be his Christ. For further information, go to unveilingthem.com. That is U-N-V-E-I-L-I-N-G them.com. Unveilingthem.com. I just heard the best sales pitch I've heard in a long time on an airplane. The flight attendant announced, if you paid more than $75 for your round trip ticket, you overpaid. This is brilliant because everybody on the flight paid more. And I was struck by how all the road warriors stopped typing and reading and working and looked up. The announcement invited us to apply for the airline's credit card. And the sign-up bonus? Enough frequent flyer miles for a free round trip. 
Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. With some banks offering free credit cards, $75 is an outrage for an annual fee, but a bargain for airline tickets. For more tips on communicating more effectively, hit survivalspeech.com, where you can see how I got the CEO of another major airline to shower me with freebies. I'm Holland Cook. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Why would they go around bombing people around the world? Doesn't that make us less safe? Oh, you know what? I guess some of these people got it coming. It's a good day to be dead if you're a terrorist search. How you're many of the people that the U.S. military has too. killed in the last decade have been terrorists? A whole bunch of them. You know what? what you like some liberal church. What percentage? A lot of people I'm not a liberal, sir. Coming. Liberals you support know, war, from what I can take tell. Take a look. Obama support war. war when we need it. We have justifiable war. You know, there's people like you. <laughs> you try it for good men do nothing, you jerk. Wait, wait, wait a second, Charlie. I'm, jerk. Jerk. I'm not bombing I'm anyone. You can feel however you feel about me, but Smedley Butler, the two-time Medal of Honor winning Marine, felt the same way. Well, you know what? Because they're headed the right way. You know what? We should have went after China. We should have chased those tricons across that river. We should have bombed them. Uh, we should have nuked them. We should have... You, you are horrible. Free Talk Live. Seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern. Live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind. Dial toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Ty on the line who is talking about agorism, which is, well, agora is a word that's a Greek word that means market, and agorism is the idea of kind of working in the marketplace, usually underground, with the intention of creating a revolution or somehow replacing the state as it exists today in its coercive monopolistic form with some sort of co- uh, with a consensual society in its place. We'll continue the discussion here in moments uh, cuz Mark is not a big fan of agorism as a strategy for a revolution and Brett I'm not really I'm sure I'm disagreeing you... with some of the way that it's that's being described. I I'd, I'd love to have you uh, clarify that here in a moment but coming up uh, on Sunday, the Free State Project's Porcupine Freedom Festival kicks off, and a lot of people would say that is a very agorist event because there are people there who are selling things without government permission. In most cases, they're not asking anybody, any bureaucrat, for a permission slip to sell a variety of products, services, food, things like that. Usually the food vendors there have never bothered to contact any government agency for a health code permit or anything like that, yet... Yet thousands of uh, meals are served over a period of a week in the Porcupine Freedom Festival. No and deaths. I've never heard of anybody even getting sick unless it was from drinking too much yeah. at the, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. And, of course, that alcohol is heavily regulated. <laughs> so uh, go to porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. We're going to be there broadcasting live, uh, Free Talk Live, every single night starting on Sunday night. So join us in person and join uh, hundreds and probably over a thousand other people who love the ideas of freedom all in the same physical location for the next week, starting Sunday, going through Sunday. That's the 22nd through the 29th. It's not too late to come up and join us, even if you can just make it up for a day. 
I think Porkfest is worth the effort. If you can make it up for more than one day, that's awesome. Come on up for the whole week. Come on up for a handful of days, whatever works best for you. We look forward to seeing you there at P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T, Porkfest. Dot com. So I kind of threw out a description of what agorism is supposed to be as I understood it. And Brett, you would like to uh, to, to differ. I, I agree with the definition. I think we're all on the same page about that. It's uh, A lot of the agorists that I've talked to don't see it as activism. You it's know? not. Right. So, And, and that, well, I think that's kind of what you're saying, Mark. I, I, I disagree with that because every definition that I've heard of agorism uses the term revolutionary or that we intend to bring about a society of voluntary interactions mm-hmm. like they use terminology as though agorism does something All right. i will agree that growing your own pork will create pork i will not agree that growing your own pork does anything to in any way undermine the you know an organizations calling themselves uh you know the state or the government or whatever we've also got Ty back on the line with us as well okay well i think i think it actually does mark i think the whole takeaway for me of this issue is we we or i do not want to replace the state because whatever you replace the state with will become the next state the idea is to show that the state is not necessary. You understand what I'm getting at? So uh, it's all, you have to bubble up. I, I think as Brett was saying, you bubble up from the individual up, and you create in the process this voluntary society. It's not, it's not that you really bring it about as a, as a plan. It's just that it, it will spontaneously occur uh, if, you're, if you have decentralized uh, people working I don't know. rational self-interest. I don't know if it will or not. I mean, the state's going to be there as lo- as long as it can last, and I think that it has a few more tricks up its sleeve before it goes down. Yeah, no, I'm with you, you know, on I wanna, that. I want to say something on that, too, well, real quick. Okay, go ahead. When it, when, it, when it feels, when the state, agents of the state feel the most threatened, that's when they are going to become the most violent, because that is their game. Violence is their main game. So people who are are prone to react violently toward the state are playing into their game. And please avoid that. Don't defend violence. Don't be violent. Just, you know, go about your business and keep, keep the focus on you being free and freeing those around you. You're but Ty, only no that's exactly the point. point. The world, that's you know exactly the reason I think that uh, agorism is not activism. Because you're saying that the state is a violent organization and will react violently when it feels threatened, and that's true. If they feel that you're, you growing your pigs is in some way threatening to them, they will react violently, and the people who have detached themselves from uh, greater society have unplugged, as it were. Those are the people least likely to react in a violent fashion. Most of them, most of the people I've seen that have gone uh, to agorism as a solution have done it because they have found the political process to be a pain in the butt. Uh, un- unsatisfying. Uh, it sucks. It stinks. It's awful. It's terrible. But please don't think that growing your own rhubarb does anything. <laughs> That's the point that I'm trying to make oh, here. It does. It, it does, does not. It does, do so, does something for that person. Yeah, that's, th- that's true. Important. But Brett, that's not and, activism. But as soon as the cops say, you will not grow any rhubarb here anymore, that person's going to either stand up and do something about it, then that which would be may very well be a revolutionary act. Okay, define a word for me. You can both do it if you want. What is activism? Well, I think activism is taking action with the intention of changing society, with changing something into the activist's mind for the better. Okay. Right. If you're talking about making yourself free, I support it, and it's awesome. But, but it's not activism. You need to also consider when you're talking about making yourself free. Are you in fact doing that? Am I freer if I work within the system and make a hundred thousand dollars a year and pay thirty or forty percent of that in taxes, um, and ending up with sixty thousand dollars net? Or um, you are you freer when you make ten thousand dollars a year and grow some of your own food and stuff? I, well, that depends. Who's, I, I would gauge that on who feel more satisfied with their lives. Absolutely. It does, you know, it's not about money. It's about, you know, we have a, the greatest resource that anybody has is their time and their attention. That is the real human currency. 
time and attention. That's why we always tell our kids, pay attention to what I'm saying. And that's what we always say, you know, what do you spend your time on? Because those are the most fundamental human currencies. And whatever you, whatever makes you happy, if, as long as you are, are uh, moving to, you know, acting within your rights, which means you're not harming anybody else, and you're working toward your happiness, and actually working to, to help others, too. You know, some, but some totally people... Agree. I totally agree. agree. But Ty, there is no tenant in agorism that says, be happy. The tenant is, work outside the system as a revolutionary force. It doesn't say, do it if it makes you happy. I love that, what I love what Ty, Ty is saying, however. I mean, I just want to jump in here and point out that uh, I like what he's saying. I mean, that's what humans be are happy. supposed to do. Agreed. Is, is seek happiness and okay. find things that uh, that help that process. Is free talk loud? Live activism. In yes. Your yes. Okay. 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 All right. The so, thing I like about agorism but not agorism. Is I like, I like Here, hold on, Ty. Hold on. Hold on. Here's what I'm trying to say. Okay. If agorism by itself is a good idea for the individuals involved, great. Do it. If you combine mm -hmm. it with another medium, like say School Sucks podcast, I just devoted six hours to this, which has a pretty significant reach. Now we're we're giving people an example of how they can live, and we're projecting it out to more people to hear. The same way that this show projects into mainstream talk radio, mm -hmm. the message of, of liberty, and therefore is activism. So by itself, it's not, but it is it is giving people an example of how to live more freely. While the state kind of shakes and a bunch of people, you know, are underneath it in the shadow, that's sad for them. I hope a lot of them get out. But to be outside of that and to be able to say to those people, hey, whether you're talking about food or work or education or, or even how you spend money, or, or how you get the goods and services you need, you have other options, then this can become a kind of activism if, like I said before, you combine it with other uh, another medium. Thanks for the call, Ty. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. I actually think Free Talk Live is an agorist show. Uh, we've never asked governmental permission to do Free Talk Live. You, we don't break FCC I don't rules pay, uh, too often. <laughs> well, that's because we want to keep radio stations on board with the show. That doesn't mean that we're beholden to the state. 855-450 frees the toll-free number here, and I don't pay taxes, so it's Free Talk Live. There's more coming up. There's a lot of confusing information out there about Bitcoin mining. Customers have been burned by companies taking their money on pre-orders for Bitcoin mining equipment, only to receive their equipment late and miss out on opportunities to mine Bitcoins. But that doesn't mean Bitcoin mining is impossible. You just have to find an honest company to do business with. If you want to mine Bitcoins and you want to do it now, no pre-orders, no waiting. Look into the AntMiner products from Bitmain. Their competitively priced AntMiners are in stock and ship from the U.S. as soon as you pay. You could buy an AntMiner today and be mining Bitcoins tomorrow. The AntMiner line offers the best mining power per dollar currently available. 20% of the mining power in the Bitcoin network is contributed by AntMiners. Not only that, but Bitmain is committed to support. You can get tech support and warranty service over the phone by calling 844-BITMAIN. For commercial accounts, they'll even travel to your data center to install your equipment. Get all the details at bitmaintech.com. That's bitmaintech.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030.
Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Fair, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course you can bring up anything you want toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So uh, feel free to chime into the conversation here. We still can come back to the NSA topic. And, of course, there's a lot of other stuff on the plate to discuss tonight as well. I almost got arrested today. We could talk about that, too. 855-450 free. Just another day in New Hampshire free. <laughs> you know, we we're talking about agorism. And the one thing I didn't get to say about agorism is, is I really do believe that Bitcoin is the jackpot of agorism. It is the 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 winning lotto card of agorism. They uh, the the what Bitcoin is is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer currency um, that is backed by the power of cryptography or math um, on the internet. It has no governmental controls. It 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 sees no um, it it sees no person. It sees no entity. It simply it does what it's told to do, and that is, you know, sends back and forth. Um, there's there's so many wonderful things about the blockchain protocol, and um, that is the the winner, as far as I'm concerned, in the area of agorism. If you want to get Bitcoins, if you call yourself an agorist, I would recommend getting Bitcoins, because this really is, uh, it's the wave of the future. Uh, but if you want to get Bitcoins, go to uh, expresscoin.com. They make it easy for you to get Bitcoin and Dogecoin. Easily, fast, safe, legal, inexpensive. They pride themselves in their customer service. As a matter of fact, they've got a new website. They've just uh, trotted out. And the back end makes it even easier for them to get better customer service. So get your cryptocurrencies with a money order check or wire transfer. That's the last in-government systems you'll have to use if you get Bitcoin. Start, start off at ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at ExpressCoin.com. Our toll-free number is 855-453, or, or excuse me, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So we had Ty on the line a moment ago, and I felt like there was more to say on this conversation about Agorism, the idea of replacing the state. It's this long philosophy or strategy, if you will, uh, that has been, uh, pro has been promoted by Sam Konkin. He was sort of the original agorist guy. He wrote... But basically, the, um, so is uh, J. Neil Shulman. 
who is the person who wrote, wrote alongside, alongside Night. Night. I mean, Konkin gets the credit, but Schultman was like right there. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, there was this thing that Konkin wrote all about what agorism is supposed to do long term. The idea was that uh, agorism generally is running some sort of business underground, typically without asking governmental permission, with the eventual uh, intention to supplant or replace rather the, the sort of the arms of the state, the various different services that the state offers, say, for instance, road construction or police protection or fire protection, these things that many people would look at that the state provides today in most places, and they would say to themselves, well, we have to have these things. So you know, how do we get from here to there? Agorism talks about that as you know, the idea that these alternative institutions, these consensual institutions would arise and compete with the state institutions and then eventually outcompete the state and then they would crumble over time. And that's sort of my understanding of yeah. Konkin's paper. Now, we were talking about agorism as activism, and Mark, you were saying that you don't think that it is. I tend to agree with you. I don't think agorism is activism until it becomes activism. And by hand and by kind of hiding in the shadows, uh, just doing business, not activism. You're not doing anything to – maybe your intention is to destroy the state, and that's great. But are you actually doing anything to uh, to advance the ideas of freedom and to put the state in check and to try to compete with them? Because until you're competing with them openly, your agorism is not activism. As soon as you you take your agorist effort and you open up a – you know if, you, if you're doing an agorist uh, food service – and you're doing it underground, you're delivering to uh, very select customers that you know, then you're just making food for your friends. And that's cool. But as soon as you take your agorist food business and you start going public with it, you start advertising, you start putting it out there that you're offering this food delivery service, and you're not getting governmental permission to do those things, you don't have a health code inspection or whatever, that to me takes your agorist project and moves it into the realm of activism. Sure. Of course, you know, with that comes significant risk, and that's what it seems like most agorists aren't willing to do. And that's fine. You know, if you, you get into business, you get into business to, to uh, serve your customer and, and help yourself and pay your employees, and et cetera. There's different reasons to get into business. Most business people don't get into business to put it all on the line to try to make a point about licensing, for instance. Well, this is, this is what I was saying uh, the last segment about projecting this out through some form of media, right? Because it's a different way of going public. I mean, traditionally, I think what people would have tried to do is, yeah, we're doing agorism, so let's put up signs around town. Well, you're done, <laughs> you know, as soon as mm -hmm. you do that, because you're exposing yourself not only to the state, and they might eventually get around to dealing with you if you're running some kind of alternative food business, but who's going to speak up? What happened to the 11-year-old boy somewhere in Michigan who wanted to have his own hot dog cart? To help out his, the, the state, the uh, other restaurants got together and they shut him down. Him they yeah. snitched him out to the state. So doing it, and as far as being vocal about it and being open about it with the immediate area where you are, uh, has a lot of dangers that projecting it out through some kind of national or international media might not have. Well, not everybody can have their own talk show or radio no, show. No, 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 but you find the people, yeah, I mean, and that's, I think that's partly, uh, you know, our responsibility, right, to find people who are doing cool things like this and see, sure, I do, love are to you talk willing about to talk about this? Do you, are, do you feel safe doing that? And if they say yes, then you do it, yeah. No, I like promoting people who are willing to stand up to the state. I mean, for instance, there are certain business owners over time that we've highlighted on this show. Uh, one of the most memorable was the uh, the bar in uh, Charleston, West Charleston, Virginia, yeah. and uh, was it the Black was it the Black Hawk Saloon. I think it might have. It sounds been? like it might be right. Um, Carrie Ellison, I think, was the the man's name who ran the place. And when they put in the smoking ban in the county in which uh, yeah. Charleston is. He decided that uh, at his bar, he was not going to enforce that smoking ban. And he stood up and eventually they beat him down and he went ahead and, you know, and he buckled. And that's what's going to happen when, the, when you're the only person standing up. You can only take so much abuse from the state. But while he was standing up, we had him on the show more than once to really highlight, look, this is a business owner who actually believes in something. He has a principle. Maybe it's not the principles of liberty, but at least in this instance, on this issue, 
he's doing the right thing. He's, ta- he's standing up and he's putting his whole business on the line. I love it when business owners will actually take a risk for freedom, for everybody's freedom. I think that's really heroic. But most agorists aren't willing to do that, just like most business people aren't willing to do it. And so as far as I'm concerned, until you are willing to take a risk for freedom, you're not doing uh, activism as an agorist. Because if the goal of agorism is to replace state agencies and state services, at some point they're going to have to come out of the closet. I mean, you can't get away with doing road repair for very long until the state, you know, at some point the state's going to find out. They're going to find you doing it. Somebody's going to call. They're going to police are going to show up when you're filling potholes and they're going to say, who are you? What are you doing out here? You are not authorized to fill these holes. You're under arrest. Well, there's a, a great example of uh, uh, some government. Um, I can't remember what the town was, but people were putting in, this guy was putting in crosswalks, nice crosswalks, mm-hmm. where he felt like they needed to be, and the town wouldn't do it because it was too expensive, but they would pay as much money as it took to take them down to remove, the, to his remove them. Crosswalks. And it, it was actually a group of people. Was it a group of yeah. people? Fine. Uh, you know, I mean, it just, it just goes to show that that uh, you know the, the the government wants very badly to be in control so you know i i want agorists to to come out of the shadows i want to see those competing institutions but it's going to take risk it's going to take money and it's going to take putting all that on the line and, and what i compete. often see with agorism is a lot of people breaking their arms to pat themselves on the back about why they don't vote mm. and as far as i'm concerned i don't consider voting any kind of activism either i mean you're you're, you're participating in a mathematically insignificant process and sticking a sticker on your chest and saying yay me well when you go out and you say don't vote it supports the system or whatever as far as i'm concerned you do the you do the exact same thing as the person who says yay me i got a sticker you're just you're just telling people so i mean i i think oftentimes what i see from act of agorists what i'm viewing is is that it's people who got sick of the system are unplugging and calling it activism and for me that's not an acceptable terminology and I agree. I, I I think that, you know, I, it, people really need to be careful and thoughtful about how they do it. And there's also something to be said for kind of building and networking and getting organized to a certain extent in the dark, mm-hmm. you know, without going public. And it's I mean, it's hard to this. Like I said, you know, the state, the government in this country anyway, they keep coming up with new tricks for how to continue. You know, I mean, if you showed their books to uh, you know, uh, or or if these were the books of any business, I guess I should say it wouldn't make any sense how they still exist, right? So of course. It, we'd like to think that the the end is near, right? But I I certainly hope it's not tomorrow. There's a lot of work to do in the meantime to figure out like what the alternatives are going to be and how to sell those to people. Take control here, toll free at eight fifty five four fifty free. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind in hour number three, which is coming up next. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Wednesday, June 18th, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama is hailing the capture of a militant leader he's calling a mastermind of the deadly 2012 attack on a U.S. mission in Benghazi, Libya. White House correspondent Mark Smith reports. The president says thanks to the courage and precision of U.S. Special Forces, Ahmed Abu Katala will now face the full weight of the American justice system. And speaking in Pittsburgh, he said the capture of Abu Katala sends an important message. When Americans are attacked, uh, no matter how long it takes, we will find those responsible, and we will bring them to justice. Critics have faulted Obama for taking so long to apprehend someone who's given multiple interviews in Libya. But he says what's important is that U.S. diplomats know their country will go after anybody who goes after them. Mark Smith at the White House. National security correspondent Sagar Magani reports Republican lawmakers are urging the Obama administration not to move too quickly in trying the Benghazi suspect in a bid to get more information about the attack. The Pentagon will not say whether Ahmed Abu Qatala has been read his rights, and the National Security Council is not ready to talk about the specifics of questioning him. But a spokeswoman says as a general rule, the U.S. always tries to get all the actionable intelligence and information it can from terrorists in custody. Two executions were carried out last night after a brief moratorium in April because of botched lethal injections. Correspondent Jim Salter reports Missouri gave inmate John Winfield a lethal injection for killing two St. Louis County women in 1996. There have been a lot of concerns about the drugs used in lethal injection, but there have not been any incidents in Missouri where there were any outward signs of distress by the inmate. And in this case, the execution went off as planned. Mr. Winfield breathed heavily a couple of times, cuffed his cheeks, but otherwise there were no outward signs of distress. In Georgia, Marcus Wellens was put to death for raping and murdering a teenage girl in 1989. <laughs> Having difficulty getting in touch with Social Security about your benefits? Ross Simpson says there's a simple reason. A lot of Social Security offices are closing. According to a congressional report, the Social Security Administration has been closing a record number of field offices, all because of budget constraints even as the demand for services soars. As a result, seniors seeking information and help from the agency are now facing increasingly long waits in person and on the phone. Social Security has shut down 64 field offices since 2010. That's the largest number of closures in a five-year period in the agency's history. Ross Simpson, Washington. Lawmakers are urging the expansion of Medicare to cover a possible life-saving screening for lung cancer. Correspondent Diane Kepley has the details. The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force in December recommended low-dose CT scans for people ages 55 through 79 who smoked a pack of cigarettes a day for 30 years. The screenings would be covered by private insurance under the new Affordable Care Act with no co-pays beginning January 1st. But the law does not require Medicare to cover the same screenings. More than 130 members of Congress are now asking that the law be changed. The Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services say any expansion of coverage will be based on whether the test is reasonable and necessary. Diane Kepley, Washington. The head of GM is vowing to fix the safety issues plaguing the company. Jerry Bodlander explains. GM CEO Mary Barra says the company has taken a number of steps to deal with safety issues, most notably an ignition problem linked to 13 deaths. She says nearly three dozen safety investigators have been hired so problems can be identified and addressed more quickly. In remarks prepared for her appearance before a House committee, Barra says she's committed to fixing what she called the company's deep underlying cultural problems, saying she will not rest until those problems are resolved. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. 
and a deadly burglary at an Arizona church is raising questions about the wisdom of clergy possessing weapons. Steve Colvin has a story. Authorities say a Roman Catholic priest responding to a break-in last week at his Phoenix church grabbed a handgun that ended up in the burglar's hands and was then used to kill a fellow priest who tried to help. Many American Catholic leaders have argued that church teaching compels them to advocate for greater limits on guns, but self-defense is also part of Catholic theology, and Catholics have different views on the issue. Concern about security at churches has grown in the last decade in the wake of several high-profile shootings. I'm Steve Coleman. And that's the news for Radio... The number of users who actually enjoy Facebook is down to four. And Apple announces a new iPhone with the N-word on the back, knowing customers will buy it anyway. And now for the delayed and utterly thoughtless romantic gesture that is The Onion Week in Review. Self-identified 9-11 truther Dennis Shaw told reporters Tuesday he's absolutely convinced the United States government has orchestrated an intricate plot to systematically destroy the last 11 years of his life. Shaw, who since 2001 has spent nearly every waking minute poring over footage of the World Trade Center attack and even handing out truther pamphlets every afternoon, says the government is behind the gradual collapse of his personal and professional life, adding that the conspiracy, quote, goes all the way to the top. Before 2001, I'd see my friend Stephen Copley every couple of weeks, and now he won't even answer my calls. The, f the f government got to him too. Think about it. My coworkers, my wife, my friends, everyone calling me crazy after September 11th and wanting nothing to do with me. What are the chances of that? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves here toll-free and bring up anything that you want. Just dial in and uh, bring up, again, whatever's on your mind. The uh, toll-free number is brought to you by ProXPN. It's 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you on the site. You can create the content. What you see on the front page, created by listeners just like you. You can submit content to the front page of the site. You can vote on what is already there. Vote up what you like, down what you don't. All for free at freetalklive.com. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. Brett. And Mark. All right. In the beginning of the program tonight, we went in uh, mostly with all your phone calls uh, in the second hour. At the beginning of the program, we started talking about a story about the NSA. And Mark, you had this story, and we just kind of got through a few paragraphs of it about how in a suit that has been filed by the Electronic Frontier Foundation challenging the NSA's warrantless collection of Americans' private data, there's been an order issued by the court in this case for the NSA to comply with some sort of turnover of information. And the NSA has now filed, as of a couple weeks ago, has filed a motion in that case, or I guess a response to the order, saying basically that they can't do that. Uh, they're going to have to shut down their database and their systems, and uh, it's uncertain. It's just too well, co complicated. Sorry, yeah. we're not sure how we would do that because we're just such a big organization. We just can't shut down. We can't. We don't know where everything is. And sorry, we just can't comply with your order, Judge. The NSA has also argued that retaining evidence for the Electronic Freedom Found uh, Frontier Foundation's uh, privacy lawsuit would put it in violation of other rules designed to protect privacy. Hmm. The NSA is protecting privacy, but <laughs> I should try this one. Uh, judge, I can't follow your orders. To follow your orders would violate my own personal rules. So therefore, I you know I can't follow. I can't do it. But what the um, the NSA presents as an impossible choice between accountability and privacy is actually a false one. Surely mm. the NSA, with its ability to sift and sort terabytes of information, can devise procedures that uh, allow it to preserve the plaintiff's data here without retaining everyone's data. The critic. The crucial question is this. If the NSA does not have to keep evidence of its spying activities, how can a court even ever test whether it's in fact complying with the Constitution? Perhaps most troubling, the new assertions continue that the NSA's decade-long effort to evade judicial review, at least in any public court, for years in cases like the ACLU's Amnesty versus Clapper, the NSA evaded review by telling the courts that plaintiffs were speculating wildly when they claimed that the agency had intercepted their communications. <laughs> Today, of course, we know that those claims were prescient. Recent disclosures show that the NSA was scanning Americans' international emails in mass all along, and now the NSA would put in 
a new roadblock, claiming that it's unable to preserve the very evidence that would allow the court to fully and fairly review those activities. Mm. So they lied before, and we're supposed to assume they're not lying now. Let's not forget, this is a group of spies, and spies' jobs are to lie. Well, they've been caught lying again and again. I mean, when Snowden uh, has—and it's been just over a year now since the Snowden releases first started coming— and uh, as he, or as I guess Glenn Greenwald, who to whom Snowden released the bulk of the information, as Greenwald uh, is sort of releasing bit by bit, the NSA kept coming out and trying to claim, oh, it's not as bad as it seems. We're we're actually pretty good over here. We're doing this and this and this. And then you would find you'd find out they were telling lies because the next reveal from Snowden's yeah. info would uh, would counter uh, would counterclaim the NSA's claims. Yeah. So it was very interesting the way that played out. How you, we, you, it's pretty predictable how government is going to respond, you know, with well, covering your butts. Lie. And then he had more information. It was, it was yeah, a nice just thing kept to watch. Yeah. bit after juicy bit, and yeah. they kept getting caught in lie after lie. Why anyone would believe that any word that comes out of those people's mouths is beyond well, me. I, I, I'm stunned at the American people's reactions to this. I mean, either we live in a country whose intelligence agency is uh, above beyond the reach of the rule of law, or we don't. Now, I, don't, I no longer believe in the rule of law. I, I was caught in that uh, lie for many, many years. I was like, look, things are fair, they're fair, they're right, they're right, they're just, they're just. It's written down, everybody's got to follow the rule. I'm, I was fine with that. But I don't believe that. And if you believe that, do you think the NSA should be able to lie their way out of this? Mm. Like they have done so many times before. They didn't comply with the courts the last time. They're not going to comply this time. You don't really believe there's rule of law in this country, do you? Do you think there ever was? You can share your thoughts with us here toll free at 855-450 free. Anything else you want to share on the story? No, nope, that's it. So uh, that's from libertycrier.com, and I think I already posted that to our Did Facebook you? Okay, because I have not yet such posted. earlier tonight. Of course, you can follow us on Facebook. Yes, I did post it. Facebook, Google+, Plus, Thank Twitter. You, you can follow us on any one of those things by going to news.freetalklive.com. That is also where you can get signed up for our news updates via email, and uh, that allows you to get clued into the Weekly Digest. It's a relatively new email that's been going out on a regular basis to all of our email subscribers. It's the only place you get it, the Free Talk Live Weekly Digest. It's got a rundown of some of the most popular as voted by you and submitted by you stories on our website, as well as uh, there's a link there to the Weekly Digest audio, which is kind of a, a summary or a highlights reel of the last week's worth of Free Talk Live. So you get all that stuff for free. Just sign up for the email list at news.freetalklive.com. Again, that's news.freetalklive.com. All right, so I said that there was a story in the Christian Science Monitor, and it came out a little earlier this year. And by the way, I believe somebody submitted this to the front page over at freetalklive.com, but I apologize for not taking a note as to who it was. So thank you. Uh, Thank you to Fat Rasputin for submitting this. Elizabeth Barber's article at Christian Science Monitor, csmonitor.com. Two decisions from New York State's highest court on Thursday, this was back in February, suggests that uh, that there is a limit, if still a vague one, on how much police can deceive suspects during interrogations. And I think somebody submitted this to our site because earlier this week we were talking about the police telling lies and how it's relatively common uh, that this is something that police are they're allowed to do. It's Not a- only are they allowed to do, but they're instructed by their superiors and their trainers on how to do this. Because it works. You know, you split two guys up, you got them pulled over, you found a bag of weed in the truck, you tell the uh, the person, you tell both of the, the people the same story that, hey, your buddy gave you up. Uh, yeah. He said this was your weed or whatever. You know, will you will you cop to it? That kind of thing. Uh, and somebody will usually roll over on their friends if they've been lied to like that. So what happened here? Well, there's an interesting case. Uh, they found that uh, police can deceive suspects during the interrogations, including lying to a suspect that someone else's life hinges on his or her confession. Or actually, what turns out is maybe they can't lie about that. In a unanimous ruling, the New York State Court of Appeals tossed out the 2009 conviction of Adrian Thomas for the murder of his infant son finding that Troy, New York police had overstepped their prerogative to use artifice when they told Mr. Thomas that his son, who was brain dead, was alive and could be saved with his confession, 
among numerous other falsehoods. How could a person be saved with a confession? I don't know, but the, the guy believed it, and he confessed to slamming the baby against a mattress before the child was taken to the hospital with brain injuries. He was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. In the ruling, Chief Judge Jonathan Lipman called the numerous ruses in the interrogation, quote, highly coercive deceptions, unquote. He singled out the ruse to stake the child's life on Thomas's confession as one likely to, quote, prompt any ordinary caring parent to provide whatever information they thought might be helpful, even if it was incriminating, unquote. In another decision on Thursday... I the- suppose um, we can, you know, they, like they would say, if we could just find out what happened... Mm-hmm. Then we'd be able to save your son's life or whatever. Well, actually, this next example is an even better uh, example of it. In another decision on Thursday, the court also upheld a lower court's ruling to overturn the conviction of Paul Avini for criminally negligent homicide in his girlfriend's heroin overdose death. The court agreed with the earlier ruling that the police had coerced Mr. Avini into confessing, telling him that his girlfriend was still alive but could die if he didn't tell them what drugs he'd given her so that she could receive the proper treatment. Of course, she was already dead. Gotcha. Okay. More on how far police can go to get a conviction. What kind of lies are they allowed to tell? The courts in New York. This is some pretty extreme ones. Yeah, yeah, the courts in New York are saying maybe this goes too far. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. But are there any firm lines? Eight fifty five, four fifty free is the toll free number. You can share your thoughts on police deception or whatever is on your mind here on Free Talk Live. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Listen, you've heard the commercials before. Whether you owe 15000 or $15 million in tax debt to the IRS or state, we can help. On a never-ending payment plan, penalties and interest killing you, missing tax returns, being garnished or levied, not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. Call the Tax Monkey now, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, that's 800-281-6030. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype, too. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. With you tonight, Ian here. Brett. And Mark. Join us over at freetalklive.com for all kinds of fun stuff. We're going to Chicago in July, the 19th and 20th, for the North American Bitcoin Conference. It's going to be Chicago's McCormick Place South Building which I assume means there is also a North Building. I don't know for certain, but uh, we're going to find out when we get there. There's going to be all kinds of folks there for this event. If you're interested in Bitcoin, you want to take Bitcoin for your business, you want to get into the Bitcoin uh, economy, you want to work developing Bitcoin in some way or work with companies that do, this is really the place to be. If you want to see Free Talk Live uh, perform live and you're in somewhere in the Midwest area or, you know, what can get a f cheap flight into uh, Midway and you want to see us, but that's great too. We'll be there doing the show uh, live and doing some interviews at the North American Bitcoin Conference. There'll be lots of folks there. We'll be doing interviews with folks like Jeffrey Tucker from Liberty.me, Vitalik Buterin from Ethereum, Brock Pierce, who's going to be doing a, um, a speak, you know, t telling people how to invest in digital currency, uh, Tony Gallippi from BitPay, Roger Veer, known as Bitcoin Jesus. Kathy Reisenwitz from uh, Young Voices. Lots and lots of folks there. You can get your tickets for July the 19th and 20th at btcchicago.com. It's July 19th and 20th, btcchicago.com. Pay in Bitcoin if you want or pay in cash, btcchicago.com. All right, so we'll see you there. And our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. There's a New York court that has determined that maybe police have finally gone too far. We had talked uh, on a previous show this week about how far is too far when it comes to the police lying. Can they say anything? You know, we, we know they can lie in order to get convictions, in order to get you to confess. They can make stuff up. We know they can lie uh, and create characters that they, uh, you know, they use for narcotics investigations, for instance. You know, they'll act as though they're uh, part of the drug culture in order to get you to trust them and you know, maybe share some drugs with them or sell them something, and then they uh, put you in a jail cell. So in a lot of cases, some police are all about telling lies. That's their, it's part of their job description. But in general, the police are trained to lie. All police officers, as I understand it, go through this training. So the question is, how far can they go with it? One court, the New York State, of, uh, New York State Court of Appeals, has tossed out a couple of convictions. Uh, one of them is of a man who was convicted of criminally negligent homicide for his girlfriend's heroin overdose death. Uh, and the court said that that it went too far for the police to tell him his girlfriend was still alive but might die if he didn't tell them what drugs he'd given her so she could receive the proper treatment. Well, he told them, and they put him in prison. Two rulings uh, come amid mounting national sensitivities to the fact that wrongful convictions are more common than once thought, and that interrogation practices designed to draw out confessions might not always produce true ones. Laurie Shanks, the clinical professor at the Albany Law School in New York, says there's a perception that people don't confess to crimes they didn't commit. Indeed, I, I find it just... I find it just stunning. I, I've, got, I've got to say, and but it's there are documented cases. It's amazing. Yep, and she goes on to say, but the science is that they absolutely do confess to crimes they didn't commit. Bluffing is a common and legal tool in police interrogation rooms, and the art of artifice. That's telling lies. <laughs> in obtaining confessions is a standard part of police training. Standard. 
Uh, the parameters for what police can lie about are broad, and lies can range from claiming to have evidence that doesn't exist to fibbing that a witness was at the scene. Still, per U.S. Supreme Court rulings, confessions must also be voluntary, with quotes around it, introducing a possible point of contention between an officer's right to lie to a suspect and his or her obligation to serve justice. The question is, at what point does the amount of lying make the confession involuntary? And the professor says there's just no bright line on it. <laughs> no. The Court of Appeals it's ruling a vague zone. on Thomas's case did not set any firm new rules on deception during interrogation, but the powerful court stance on the issue could yet have significant bearing on what amount of guile lower courts will tolerate in confessions brought before them, as well as potentially encouraging revisions of police practices, say legal analyst, clinical professor at Northwestern University School of Law in Chicago, says the court did not set any hard and fast rules, but it did issue some clear warnings that these tactics will be scrutinized closely in the future. Of course, the police are probably not aware of these court decisions. You know, Each individual officer isn't given a, a legal briefing on all of the relevant court uh, rulings that have been made across the country or even in their own district. So how, how uh, permeated this information will become among police officers is a question. But even if they do know it, they also know that they themselves aren't liable. So if the officer... Right, whatever happened in these court cases, you can believe the police officers didn't spend any time in jail for yes. the way they treated these, um, you know, these these people. Um, I, and, and in these cases, it doesn't, it, it doesn't sound like there's too many good guys in these stories, does it? No. Remember, too, though, there's a real us versus them win-lose mentality going on here. And they see this as... I, I remember reading this police blog, and there were these three rules... Of you know the, the the first one is everybody lies, so mm -hmm. they their assumption is that you're lying to them anyway. You know whether it's a routine traffic stop or a more detailed investigation. Right. Um. The the second one was uh, be uh, polite to everyone but nice to no one, and the third one was have a plan to kill everyone you meet. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I remember that. But that first one, everybody lies, is is really, uh, you know. It takes us away from the idea that uh, the police are on your side to protect and serve, all of that. They assume that you are a liar if you're dealing with them. So they, it's, it becomes easier for them to justify a lot of the stuff that they do. Sounds like a fair assumption, doesn't it? I mean, really, I mean, what, I, when, you're, when you're dealing with the police, I feel, feel like you have every right to lie. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, what I recommend you do... Is to not say a not thing. Not talk at all. Right. Yeah. I recommend you say that you can talk to my attorney. If they say, well, who's your attorney? You say, you're a police you're officer. You're a detective. <laughs> Do some out. police work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like I, if yeah. you have no obligation to tell them who your attorney is or in any other circumstances unless you're under arrest. You um, don't have to tell them who your attorney is even if you're under arrest. I guess you don't, but no. I mean, the court did not set any hard and fast rules. Uh, they say these things might be scru uh, closely scrutinized in the future. But remember... They'll only be scrutinized if somebody takes the case to court. If the cops lie to you and they get a confession out of you and then you, you know, you plead guilty or something with that confession, then if you don't take that to court and challenge their uh, their decision, no one's going to scrutinize that. Nope. It's done. So uh, this isn't going to be closely scrutinized. And even if something was Jails closely Jails are full of people that were likely convicted yeah. illegally. Not that I'm saying that uh, I feel terrible that they're there. In many cases, it's like, well, you know, so what? But, um, yeah, it's true. So, and even if it is scrutinized, again, the officer himself will not be found liable for illegal lying because it's not illegal to lie. They'll just say that, well, that one went too far. We'll reverse this conviction. And maybe some cops will be more careful in the future, but I and doubt it, it. And it seems like when the courts try to draw a line, that the line just keeps on moving back sure. towards tyranny. There's been too much deference given to police officers, says one of the professors. They've come, uh, they're accustomed to having free reign with suspects behind interrogation doors. We'll continue here in moments. 855, 453. How far can the police go when telling a lie or multiple lies to you? When you are their suspect, 855 453, you can tell, uh, tell us your experience with lying police or if you are a cop. Want to hear from you? Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. 
Hi, I'm Dan Pillow, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also have Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. Our toll-free lines were, are brought to you by ProXPN. If you care about online privacy, you really need to look into proxpn.com slash FTL. That's, uh, it's a great website that actually gives you a software for free for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, and Android. You install it. And your internet connection becomes encrypted, meaning that your internet service provider won't know what you're doing online anymore once you start using ProXPN. 
Now, your ISP right now is probably uh, keeping track of every website you visit and every search term you enter for as many as five years in some cases. You can put a stop to that right now by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Grab the software there and get started. You can start up with their free account and get a, give it a try, see how it works and how well it works. And then, of course, it'll work even better once you sign up for their premium account where you get unlimited bandwidth. So the free accounts don't have the unlimited bandwidth, nor do the free accounts allow you to access servers all around the world as well as the ability to privately torrent. You get all that with their premium account, and you can get it for 5 bucks a month by using our discount code FTL20, which gives you 20% off for the lifetime of your account. And when you use that code FTL20 on their annual plan, it breaks the price down to $5 a month for amazing privacy protection. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. They don't keep records of your online habits, and you get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee at proxpn.com slash FTL. Promo code is FTL20. 20, as we continue here with a story from the Christian Science Monitor about how far police can go uh, as far as telling lies. It's standard practice. It's standard training to tell police that they can lie and give them examples of how to lie to suspects in order to get them to, uh, to, to, give, up, to give up information on their friends or to, uh, to admit having done some sort of crime and or non-crime. Of course, in a lot of cases, lying is used to turn friend against friend or brother against brother in drug cases, for instance. So uh, we're going to learn more here from the Christian Science Monitor. Now, uh, they say that there's been too much difference, uh, deference rather given to police officers, and they're accustomed to having free reign with suspects behind interrogation doors. This according to a clinical professor at Northwestern University School of Law in Chicago. The case at issue dates back to September of 2008, when in two interrogation sessions over nine hours, Troy police in New York told Thomas that his four-month-old child Matthew was alive after Thomas allegedly uh, beat this, his son. Uh, but medical professionals would not know how to save him until he told the police what had happened. Do you want to save your baby's life? Asked one officer, according to a transcript. When Thomas said he did, the officer countered with, Are you sure about that? Because you don't seem like you want to save your baby's life right now. Police also assured Thomas 67 times that they believed the baby's injuries were an accident and that he could go home if he just told them what happened. They told him that they would scoop up his wife if he didn't confess. And they, not wow. Thomas, supplied all the details in his eventual confession, according to the court decision. In his decision, Chief Judge Littman wrote that from the onset, the interrogation had as its object obtaining a statement that would confirm a hypothesis that the infant had been murdered through physical abuse. Thomas's case is now heading back to a lower court where his confession will be suppressed. Arthur Glass, acting district attorney in Rensselaer County, where Thomas was prosecuted, said he was disappointed with the ruling and planned to pursue the case. It was typical police well, procedure, he says. You know, I've got to say that if this guy did slam his baby on the uh, the, the bed and jar its little brain to the point it killed it, um, I, I don't, I mean, <laughs> I'm not thrilled either, but um, I'm I'm stunned with the way they interrogated this guy. Yeah, I mean, like you pointed out, there's no real good guys in this situation. No good guys here. Dad no, here's a scumbag. If these interrogation tactics are being used here, I mean, they're probably being used in lesser crimes as well. Right. Absolutely. I mean, th this is the point is, is that every now and then somebody will actually take it all the way and dispute these things. But, uh, you know, I mean, what we're told by these, uh, what we're told is, is that once you ask for a lawyer, they're not allowed to ask you any more questions. I can tell you in my case that I demanded a lawyer and... They basically told me that. <laughs> Shut up, boy. Go ahead, and uh, here's the phone book. You can call them. I didn't have an attorney. Mm -hmm. um, you know what do I do now? And they just kept on going until they got something. They'd got me to tell a lie, and then once I told a lie, it was over. The district attorney says it's typical police procedure. They were following the rules as they existed at that time. They were certainly deceitful, but they used deceit when necessary. The case also appeared to spotlight the issue of whether interrogation should be videotaped. New York State is not among some 20 states that require police to tape interrogations, but the Troy Police Department has videotaped them since about 2008. In the Thomas case, that meant the court had a full chronicle of how the confession was made. And, of course, we were also talking and about— And I think that's important. Yeah. We've also discussed how the FBI does has a policy against 
recording. So, and that needs to change. Um, these police Definitely. departments working in the, <laughs> working <laughs> working under the, uh, the the dark of night, where no one can look at what they do, it is completely unacceptable. Share your thoughts here. Maybe you've been interrogated by the police, and you can relate the lies that were told to you, or perhaps your friend. Uh, your friends, if you all got picked up at the same time, trying to turn you against one another by deceiving you, you can't believe a word that comes out of a cop's mouth, unfortunately. And it's, I think, instances where you find out that the police have lied to you that can be really shocking for people who have believed that the police are supposed to be honest. Like when, you, when you're growing up, you're taught that Officer Friendly is an honest guy and you, can, you should trust him. You, if there's something wrong, kids, go to the police. They're going to help you. But it turns out that they are, uh, you know, they're just looking to put people in cages. Well, uh, you know, uh, the it's it's hard for the average person to feel bad when uh, the police lie and put a bad person away as a result. Like, um, you know, this guy who did the terrible, terrible thing with his, his child. Um, but at the same time, you're right. The this really doesn't arm people well. The vast majority of times that uh, you're going to deal with uh, the, the judicial system, once uh, you come into the wrong end of the judicial system, it's probably not a violent crime. Mm-hmm. You're probably not a bad person. There's probably no victim. So therefore, when you are up against the the game, essentially, and that's what it is at that point. When there's no victim, there's nothing. There's no cost. There's nothing at stake. It's just a game. A game where the players on one side have nothing to lose, and the game. Uh, a game where the you players on the other side have been lied to their whole lives and have everything to lose. And that's not a fair game. That's a game that fills up prisons and creates a prison industrial complex like we have in this country. Take control here. Share your thoughts. 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Interesting uh, statistic from Pew Research, as reported in the Washington Examiner, 54 thousand is the number of newspaper and magazine jobs that have been uh, axed gone since 2003 the in 10 years yeah 54,000 media jobs a lot of, of people how, wow. what, just just newspaper just newspaper and magazine Oof. the decade long devastation of the print news business crushed by the sagging economy evaporation of classifieds and its display advertising and a reader shift to digital media has cost at least 54,200 newsroom jobs in newspapers and magazines alone according to Pew Research that figure buried in a new Harvard University study about the troubles non-traditional reporters have getting congressional White House and other official press passes to cover news events is the highest calculation of job losses in American journalism yet. The June study. You know, the guy, the magazine I used to work for down in Sarasota, um, SRQ magazine, Mm -hmm. that guy has added, um, he and his wife, um, they have added jobs and the revenue is up since I left. Um, So I think you can run a magazine, a newspaper. You're going to have a heck of a time running it. I would love to see somebody take the weekly model and apply it to a daily newspaper, Mm -hmm. which is to say, um, give away the product for free. And then sell the advertising space and sell more advertising space, go beyond 50%. I mean, there's always more paper, um, but nobody does that. Plenty of time for your calls and thoughts, especially if you work in the newspaper slash print magazine industry and you've observed the cuts, you've observed the slashing and burning of various different departments or shutdowns and sales of uh, papers entirely. 855-450 free. You can share your thoughts here in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, which are coming up next. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com 
Listen up, all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. From hackers and identity thieves to government spies, your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to unseennow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. Unseennow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at unseennow.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live, and moments remain here, but enough time for your call. If you dial in right now, we'll be able to get you on at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Skype is available. I don't think anybody used it tonight. It's there for you. Anytime you want to use it, just connect to lrn.fm. You do need to send us a contact request first, though, so do that. It'll be approved. You just have to give us a few minutes. It'll get approved, and then you can easily call us on Skype from that point forward. Uh, joining you in the studio tonight, Ian here. Brett. And Mark. Don't forget to check out Brett's website at schoolsucksproject.com. And don't get, forget to get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. There, we offer to you, through our partnership with uh, Kamano Island Coffees, Buzzbox Coffee. Buzzbox is shade-grown, which is great for people who get that kind of acidy feeling when they have a cup of coffee because it's, uh, it's not as acidy. And it's 100% organic, which is... Great, because coffee is a really uh, absorbent crop, and you really don't know when you're talking about foreign countries what kind of uh, pesticides we're talking about there, or leaded fuel, things like that. I don't know exactly how leaded fuel reacts to coffee plants, but um, I'd prefer to have organic in that circumstance. <laughs> Top 1% grade Arabica beans, of course, that's the best flavor, the best of the best. Buzzbox is commensurately priced with other high-end coffees out there. But what they do that other coffee companies seem to have no interest in is they care for their employees by offering an opportunity for them to get involved in the co-op. Uh, people can get, you know, your average family in these poor countries can get in. Poor families can get in. And they also allow partners like Free Talk Live to offer 
um, these uh, micro loans to different families around the world. They don't even have to have anything to do with BuzzBox or the way that they uh, do business, whether it's somebody who needs a sewing machine to make shoes for their village or a plow to, um, you know, be able to be more productive in their fields or a bicycle to do deliveries or whatever it might be. Uh, there was uh, one gal that was listed recently um, that was able to just expand her sandwich making business and went from her overhead for making like $100 a month to $300 a month. That's a big difference. And she was able to pay back the microloan. That's a big deal. So if you want to help us, give hand a hand up to p families around the world like so many dozens and dozens and dozens of people have at coffee.freetalklive.com. You pay for the shipping on the free pound. Try it out. See if you like it. If you like it, please keep get getting your coffee there at coffee.freetalklive.com because you're helping other people while you drink your coffee. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Derek's on the line in North Dakota. Derek, you're on Free Talk Live. Derek? Hey, good show. Um, Welcome. Are you in Fargo, by the way? About, I'm actually in uh, Grand Forks. Oh, Grand Forks. Okay, very good. Listening to yep. KNOX. Go you ahead were with talking your thoughts. About, yep. Um, you were talking about uh, talking to the cops. Yes. And I would absolutely recommend that never, ever, under any circumstances, make any statement to Leo's. Ever. Uh, that's the Fifth Amendment. And that's the right against self-incrimination. You know, when you get arrested, they say you have the right to remain silent, blah, blah, blah. That means keep your mouth shut. Don't tell them anything, no matter what they say to you. Yeah, Period. as a matter of fact, if you um, even if they don't tell you you have the right to remain silent, you still have the right to remain silent. The one thing that you're supposedly have to say to them is, is, I'm choosing to enact my Fifth Amendment rights to remain silent. But other than that, that's all you have to say. Right. You do have to invoke that now. And really, you shouldn't have to. Right. I mean, if it's a right, why, why do I have to claim it? Or is it just some pri little privilege that they can take away at any time? But, yeah, you should, you should say that, um, that you are invoking your right. And, um, you know, let's say you get stopped in traffic. Uh, technically, it's like a detention, being detained right there. Yep, you're being detained. And you know, I always say, oh, uh, oh, do you know why I stopped you? They're just trying to get you to say, oh, yeah, I was speeding. And yep. essentially, they're trying to get you to admit that you just committed that little violation or whatever. And Is this a quiz I, show? I would always say. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you don't know why you stopped me? Why are you asking me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> And that what I would just say is, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't make any comments on a pending case, because that's what it is. It's a <laughs> are pending you, case. Officer, are you conducting an investigation? Yeah, that's a good, that's a favorite <laughs> question of mine. Are you conducting an investigation? Well, actually, it was taught to me by a right. law enforcement officer. Was it? He said... Under you know, under no circumstances do you talk to law enforcement officers. If they ask you a question, you ask them if they're conducting an investigation. If they're not conducting an investigation, then you don't have to um, have to anything to worry about because they're not in an investigator investigatory uh, stance. Of course, I'd still be careful. Could but that's what he said. You. Yeah. No, what if they say they are conducting an investigation? Then you don't. What, I, I, are they trained in how to deal with that question? What if the, what if they just say? Yes, because they don't. They think they are. Or then when you, you still don't talk to them, it's just a fun question to ask. Oh, back it, to oh, the cops. Is, oh okay, all right. If, I didn't if know. you want to talk to the cops, which is not usually a good idea, it can be fun to ask them questions in response to their questions. Don't sure. give them any information. Just ask more questions back. That can be frustrating for them. Might be useful to do a role play one night. I would think. Yeah, that could be fun. Get, go ahead, Derek. I guess, uh, you know, from my point of view, if, if I was out walking in the woods and I tripped over a dead body, I, I would not contact law enforcement. And I mean, unless I absolutely had no choice, yeah. I would just stay away from them. Um, you know, every everything you do is a crime nowadays. And you know, like you said, they're just looking to put people in jail. And that's the longer it. you talk to a I, police I do officer, not find them to be trustworthy. Yeah, the longer you talk to the police, the more likely they're going to find something to put you in handcuffs for. That's right. a fact. Right. Exactly. Yep. Hey, Derek, how be did you learn all this stuff? Did you learn right? it the hard way? I mean, you see, you seem really well informed on this. Well, I, you know, I look at websites like your guys's and you know Alex Jones and and uh, that kind of thing. 
Very good. A little Educate bit of yourself. Yeah, a little information oh. goes a long way. Thanks for the call tonight, Derek. Glad you're out there listening in, uh, in Grand Forks. And welcome aboard with Free Talk Live. In fact, speaking of asking the police some questions, I asked them a few today when I was out in front of the Supreme Court. Uh, we were waiting to go in for Rich Paul's hearing. And Rich Paul, of course, you heard earlier on the show tonight, he was appealing his case where he was convicted of selling cannabis based on the judge giving pretty awful jury instructions. Uh, during the trial, both attorneys actually talked about jury nullification and gave the jury information about how it's their right to judge, or your right as a juror, to judge the law itself, if you choose. If you think it's a bad law, you can vote not guilty, and that's what jury nullification is all about. The judge gave instructions that basically counteracted all the information about jury nullification, where he essentially said, well, if you heard something from the lawyers that's different from what I'm going to tell you, you need to listen to what I'm going to tell you. And then he essentially went on to say that uh, you know, whatever it is that I instruct you on as far as the law is right. concerned is what you will take under consideration. My favorite part of today's, uh, you know, arguments was came from the state where they say, hey, if nullification is a right of a jury, why do they have to be informed of it? Well, I mean, when the judge gives instructions that are counter to uh, the the jury's right, that's I mean, that was it goes against entirely the law that was passed here in New Hampshire. Well, the uh, the argument from the state in this case was that nullification is not a right. It is a power of the jurors, and it's a tolerated power. It's not even one that the courts necessarily wanted the jurors to have, but there's that whole pesky Magna Carta, as one of the uh, attorneys put uh, put forth today, and, and that essentially that the jury nullification exists sort of because of the way the system is constructed, that there's no way to punish jurors for nullifying. It's not illegal for the jury to nullify, but it's Look, also not their right was the position of illegal the Illegal and legal is silly. The fact is, courts, the courts and the jurors' rights existed before law. Before there was codified law, um, common law, was it was the power of the jury to do this. Jury nullification came before law, came before um, the court system being part of the government. It was a service provided by people that were, um, you know, important. So ridiculous, all of it. We can play some of the audio from the outside of the court today. I've got the video from the inside of the court. I've yet to process that. So if you've been waiting to see what a Supreme Court hearing is like, I, it was my first time. I'd actually been to the Supreme Court building previously. Can't believe you got a camera in it. Yeah. Oh, it's not a problem at all. I can get a camera in any, any courthouse in New Hampshire. Um, but anyway, it was the first time I'd been for an actual court hearing. I'd been to the courthouse previously uh, when they were having hearings about changing court rules but to actually have a case in front of them that was the first time for that is it a fancy room oh it's very fancy and the judges were not let's just say i didn't get a real friendly vibe towards jury nullification from them today so i don't know how well this this case is going to go we'll keep you in the loop as hey it's these people's job to uphold the law isn't it goes on here nathan uh you got about 20 seconds for the final thoughts of the show go ahead uh, I just wanted to get in real quick that I love the tree conversation from last week with Brett and uh, Mark and Ian, and one of the best conversations I have ever heard on the show. The tree conversation. The elm trees? Yep, the elm trees. Uh, yeah. the initiating force against trees. Gotcha. Exactly. Glad you liked it, Nathan. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. You can always, uh, if you missed that, you can go back in our archives at freetalklive.com, and you can download last week's shows, last year's shows, several years ago, all the way back to late 2006. Free. Check out Brett. Schoolsucksproject.com is his site. Ours is freetalklive.com, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Are you? Shortly after creating a profile on OkCupid.com, local man Malcolm Lighty, a person with severe psychological and emotional issues, told reporters he thought it was best to just never mention the fact there was something seriously wrong with him on the popular dating website. The thing about online dating is you don't want to get too personal too quickly. Like, for example, how I'm a textbook narcissist with unresolved intimacy issues or the fact that I have no sense of empathy. Nobody wants to hear about that. When you're making a first impression, it's important that you keep it casual and don't include too much information. You don't want to be talking about your inability to maintain a relationship because of a history of violent mood swings. Lighty told reporters while his OkCupid okay profile includes extensive details about his favorite movies, love of cooking, and interest in cars, he thought he was, quote, just better off not mentioning the borderline personality disorder that makes it impossible for him to connect with another person on any kind of meaningful level. This is the Onion News Network. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. 
ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, June 18th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.73 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,270 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $610. Antiwar.com reports, police attacked unarmed protesters loyal to Mohammed Tahir al Qadri in the city of Lahore, Pakistan, after they objected to police removing barricades set up to protect the Canada-based anti-Taliban preacher's home. Qadri plans to return to Pakistan next week, and police aimed to disperse his followers by force, firing into the crowd and beating protesters, starting a riot. Eight died, including one policeman, and over 70 others were reported wounded. Qadri, a Sufi scholar, is harshly critical of the Taliban, but has also made political enemies with his anti-corruption speeches, organizing demonstrations against members of parliament accused of corruption. He has also backed the idea of a military coup to provide stability and believed to have connections to the Inter-Services Intelligence Spy Agency, meaning the clashes with his followers risk putting the police under the command of the Interior Ministry in conflict with his military backers. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. Fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the fans program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F A N S.fppradio.com. Reuters reports congressional Republicans criticized the U.S. Internal Revenue Service on Tuesday over its loss of emails possibly linked to last year's controversy about the tax agency's treatment of Tea Party-aligned political groups. Hammering away at the White House and the IRS over the 2013 affair, a handful of Republicans accused the Obama administration of obstructing congressional probes and renewed calls for naming of an independent prosecutor. Republican Representatives Dave Camp and Charles Bustany said in a joint statement, This entire investigation has been slow-walked by the Obama administration. It looks like the American people were lied to. White House spokesman Josh Earnest told reporters aboard Air Force One on Monday that the IRS is blaming of a computer crash for the loss of emails was entirely reasonable because it's the truth and it's a fact. He added, speculation otherwise, I think is indicative of the kinds of conspiracies that are propagated around this story. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, as fighters of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria continue to expand southward toward Baghdad, the next target seems to be Baguba, the capital of the Diyala province, with over 460,000 people just 31 miles from Baghdad's city limits. There have been reports of clashes there already, and some of the police fled last night, but not before executing 44 Sunni detainees who were being held without charge 
under the state's draconian anti-terror laws. Police sources said the 44 were being held for questioning on suspicion of having ties to militant factions and that they were killed inside the jail by the policemen before they withdrew from the station last night. Bizarrely, the Iraqi military tried to deny this, claiming all 44 were killed in a mortar attack on the police station, though the Bakuba morgue confirmed they were all shot to death at close range. ISIS has been using the execution to try to drum up support from Sunnis in Bakuba. If Bakuba falls, it gives ISIS control of the highway into northeastern Baghdad, giving them three major thoroughfares through which to access the Iraqi capital. ISIS already controls the highway through the western Anbar province, as well as much of the highway into the northwest of the city by way of Mosul and Tikrit. It would also be the fourth provincial capital under ISIS control after Ramadi in Anbar, Mosul in Nineveh, and Tikrit in Salahadin. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A report released Tuesday by physicists at Stanford University revealed that the entire known universe from the whole of human civilization to the totality of matter and energy is actually the fictional setting of a cop show called Hard Case. According to authors of the report, existence as we know it was created solely to provide the framework for the primetime drama that airs weekly in a parallel universe and that every historical event prior to the show's September 2008 pilot, including the Renaissance, World War II, Evolution, the September 11th attacks, and the presidential administration of Washington through Clinton never actually happened and are merely part of the elaborate backstory crafted by hard case creator and showrunner Dominic Egan. We used to believe that our universe operated under immutable laws of thermodynamics and gravitational relativity, but now we know everything just comes from the minds of hard cases 12 staff writers. Overall, it seems like a very well-written show. Physicists have theorized that the universe as we know it will cease to exist whenever hard case airs its final episode. This is the Onion News Network. Yeah, welcome everybody to the Cop Lock Radio Show live on LRN.FM. The only show that... Well, actually, now there's two shows that do it now. So we, we cover police accountability and police state issues. I'm your host, Eric, and with me tonight, I have Scott. How's it going, man? Good, man. There's another show? You, well, I think uh, Angel Clark is now doing Mondays as Police Accountability Day. There's a lot to so cover. It's like her entire show. Yep. No shit. I think she's doing it in um, conjunction with uh, Police State USA. <sighs> Sorry. Um, that's like <laughs> one of my favorite websites. I know, right? <laughs> Damn it. It's all good. Those. Yeah, it's all good. 